BGMC. The biblical truth lives here. scriptures foretold of the anointed one, Yeshua HaMashiach. The Messiah Yeshua came to call the people back to the truth of His word and to follow that righteous path. Yeshua then called Jewish men to be His disciples, and after His death and resurrection, those Jewish men told the world about the Jewish Messiah. Now, after 2,000 years, Beth Goyim Messianic Congregation has that same calling of those Jewish men telling all people, both Jew and Gentile, about the proper ancient path, teaching the Route 66 King's Highway from Genesis through to Revelation, and how you need and can get back to the proper roots of the faith and a closer walk with God. Now, let's hear the message. Let's go get a blessing. Turn to the book of Vayikra, Leviticus chapter 23. Vámonos al libro de Levíticos, Vayikra, capítulo 23. Leviticus 23, we're going to read verse 1 through 14. Vamos a leer versículos 1 al 14 del libro de Vayikra, Levíticos, capítulo 23, versículo 1 al 14. The title of this uh, Holy Day lesson is The Bikarim Understanding of Thank You, Jehovah, HBO 3, Bikarim 5781. <laughs> El título de hoy es Entendiendo el significado de acción de gracias a Jehová en Bicorín HB00 Bicorín año 5781-2020. Bicorín understanding of thank you, Jehová. El entendimiento de Bicorín de la acción de gracias a Jehová. Everything you hear today will be in English and in Spanish. Todo lo que escuchen el día de hoy será aquí traducido al español y en ingles, será dicho en inglés. We're going to go through and we're going to read a lot of scripture for this holy day. Vamos a leer muchas escrituras para este día santo. I'm only going to read in English. Únicamente leeré las escrituras en inglés. So if you're reading in Spanish or any other language, read it for yourself as I read the English. Si estás leyendo en español o en algún otro lenguaje, léelo como voy, así le porque yo solo leeré en inglés. Today's holy day lesson will only ha will have a synopsis. And one gigantic lesson. El día de hoy tendremos una sinopsis y una lección gigantesca. I'm going to read the synopsis in English, and our good friend Rebbitz and Veronica is going to read it in Spanish. Vamos a leer la sinopsis. Synopsis. Some people can be walking on the road to Emmaus and not even see who Messiah is. Yom HaVikarim is all about the seed that has to die so that it can bring life. Yes, from one seed can come an abundance of if planted properly. But if you think the seed can only grow in Israel, you're sadly mistaken. The coastlands waited for the whole truth. Now let not only uh, now let them not only learn about this about the Hashabbat, but the full knowledge of the six thirteen. Let them learn Torah and about who is the Bikarim. Sinopsis. Algunas personas están caminando en la ruta de Maús y ni siquiera saben quién es el Mesías. Yom Habikurim se trata de la semilla que tiene que morir para que pueda traer vida. Si de una semilla puede venir abundancia si se planta adecuadamente. Pero si piensas que la semilla solo puede crecer en Israel, estás equivocado. Las costas esperaron por la verdad. Ahora, permítenles no solo aprender sobre lo que es el Hashabat, pero también el pleno conocimiento de los 613. Déjalos aprender la Torah y de quién se trata el Bikurim. Amen. The Bikurim, the main understanding of Bikurim is about thanksgiving. El entendimiento completo de Bikurim es, es acerca de, la, de dar gracias. This is a day of great thanksgiving. Este es un día de gran agradecimiento. Now, why is it a great day of great thanksgiving? Porque es hoy un día de gran agradecimiento. Lives have been given to, to redeem us. Lives have been given 
for us to be redeemed. Se han dado vidas para nosotros ser redimidos. A couple of thousand years ago, Miles de años atrás, the Egyptian firstborn's lives were taken so that we could be redeemed. La vida de los primogénitos egipcios fue tomada para que nosotros podamos vivir. And then Yeshua gave his life on Hag Matzah. Después Yeshua entregó su vida en Hag Matzah. So that he could redeem the world. Así él puede redimir el mundo. And this week we're eating, we're eating matzah. Y esta semana hemos estado comiendo matzah. And it's very difficult to eat sandwiches that are made of matzah. Y es muy difícil comer sándwiches que son hechos de matzah. So if you've never eaten over the table, you will this week. Si no has comido nunca en la mesa, pues ahora esta semana para. Because when you eat, take one bite, the rest ends up on your plate. Porque cuando tomas un mordisco, el resto termina en el plato. But why does Jehovah have a whole week of, of eating matzah? Pero por qué Jehovah nos ha ordenado comer una semana completa de matzah? And why are we talking about that on Bikurim? ¿Y por qué estamos hablando de eso en Bikurim? Because today is two holy days. Porque hoy día celebramos dos días santos. It's Hag Matzah. Estamos en Hag Matzah. And the Bikurim, Ha Bikurim. Y el Ha Bikurim. Now we're eating matzah to reflect that our old life has passed away. And now, ahora comes, nosotros comemos la matzah en representación de que nuestra vida anterior ha pasado. To reflect that we were in bondage and now we're free. Para mostrar que una vez estuvimos en esclavitud y ahora estamos libres. But today is the Bikurim. Pero el día de hoy es el Bikurim. And the Bikurim is about saying thank you to Jehovah Elohim. Y el Bikurim se trata de darle gracias a Jehovah Elohim. And when you have a guest in your home and you're serving a pie. Cuando está, tienes un invitado en casa y estás sirviendo un pastel. You have a very special, let's say you have a very special guest in your home. Digamos que tienes un invitado muy especial en tu casa. And you, you know, you've eaten dinner and now you're going to have uh, the dessert after dinner, which everybody loves. Y ahora están comiendo la cena y el momento del, del postre, tienes un postre especial. It is proper manners to always give the guest of honor the first piece of pie. Es una buena regla de etiqueta el darle al invitado el primer pedazo de pastel. Bikarim is about giving Jehovah Elohim the first piece of pie. De, el Bikurim se trata de darle a Jehovah Elohim el primer pedazo de pastel. Bikurim, <coughs> excuse me. Bikurim is about saying to God, have the first of my work. Bikurim se trata de decirle a Jehovah, toma lo primero de mi trabajo. Bikurim is about saying to Jehovah, have the first part of my life. Bikurim se trata de decirle a Jehovah, te, toma la primera parte de mi vida. Bikurim is about saying, you, Elohim, are the first in my life. Bikorim se trata de decirle a Jehovah Elohim, tú eres el primero en mi vida. Bikorim is this. Bikorim se trata de esto. It is a small offering to God. Este Bikorim es una, es una pequeña ofrenda para Dios. To let him know that he is the king of everything in your life. Para dejarle saber que él es el rey de todo lo que hay en tu vida. But remember, when you're giving to Jehovah, you don't give out of, you don't, you have to give with a joyful heart. Pero recuerda que cuando le das a Jehovah, tienes que darle con un corazón gozoso. Let me say that again. Déjame repetirlo otra vez. When you give to Jehovah, you must give with a joyful heart. Cuando le das a Jehovah, tienes que darle con un corazón gozoso. Remember in the Brit Hadashah, Yeshua tells us of the woman who gave her two pennies. Recuerda del Brit Hadashah, Jehovah nos habla de la mujer que entregó sus dos, um, sus dos uh, monedas. And um, she was blessed because she gave out of her wand. Y ella fue bendecida porque ella entregó todo. Yeshua said she'll never be forgotten because of what she did. 
Y el Señor dijo, ella no será olvidada por lo que ella hizo. So the day of Bikarim is about giving back to God. El día de Bikarim es darle al Señor de vuelta. And the Bikarim is also about the resurrection of our Messiah, Yeshua. Y el Bikarim también se trata de la resurrección de nuestro Mesías, Yeshua. Because he rose from the grave on the Bikarim. Porque él se levantó de la muerte en Bikarim. There's an order to everything that God the Father had. Hay una orden a todo lo que el Padre tenía. Yeshua did not come here to start something new or to change what his father had. Yeshua no vino acá a cambiar o a dar algo nuevo o a cambiar lo que el padre ya tenía. He came here to take over the role of the Kohen Hagadol, the high priest, for eternity. Él vino acá a tomar el cargo de sacerdote, de, de sumo sacerdote. So when we're reading our Bible, cuando leamos nuestras Biblias, we must understand that the Father does not change. Tenemos que entender que el Padre no cambia. Okay, so let's look at order. Let's turn to Leviticus 23, by Ecker 23. Ahora leamos a Levíticos, by Ecker 23. And we're going to read verse 1 through 14. Y vamos a leer los versículos 1 al 14. By Ecker Leviticus chapter 23, verse 1 through 14. By Ecker Leviticus 23, versículos 1 al 14. Jehovah said to Moshe, tell the people of Israel the designated times of Jehovah, which you are to proclaim as holy convocations, are my designated time. Work is to be done on six days. The seventh day is a Shabbat of complete rest, a holy convocation. You're not to do any kind of work. It is a Shabbat for Jehovah, even in your home. These are the designated times of Jehovah. The holy convocations you are to proclaim at their designated time. In the first month, on the 14th day of the month, between sundown and complete darkness, comes Pesach for Yehovah. On the 15th day of the same month is the festival of Matzah. Seven days you are to eat Matzah. The first day you are to have a holy convocation. Don't do any kind of ordinary work. Bring an offering made by fire to Yehovah for seven days. On the seven days of holy convocation, do not do any kind of ordinary work. Jehovah said to Moshe, tell the people of Israel, after you enter the land, I'm giving you in the harvest its ripe crops. You are to bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest to the Kohen. He is to weigh the sheaf before Jehovah so that you will be accepted. Kohen is to wave it on the day after the Shabbat. On the day that you weighed the sheaf, you are to offer a male lamb without defect, the first year in the burnt offering for Jehovah. Its grain offering is to be one gallon of fine flour mixed with olive oil, an offering made by fire to Jehovah as a fragrant aroma. Its drink offering is to be wine, one quart. You are not to eat bread, dried grain, or fresh grain until the day you bring the offering for your Elohim. This is a permanent regulation for all your generations, no matter where you live. Amen? Let's go to, back to verse 14. Vamos de vuelta al versículo 14. You're not to eat bread, dried grain, or fresh grain until the day you bring the offering for your Elohim. This is a permanent regulation for all your generations, no matter where you live. Now we just read verse 1 through 14, and we keyed on verse 14. Ahora leímos los versículos 1 al 14, nos estamos enfocando en el versículo 14. The, the verse 1 through 14 was about Jehovah's Moedim, his spring holy day. What we see in verse 1 through 14 and throughout the chapter 23 is Jehovah the Father's the eternal one's order. Jehovah's order. Es que vemos la orden de Jehovah Elohim. Okay. It's something for us to very much look at today. Algo que nosotros debemos observar el día de hoy. Because 
when you get when we get to the Brit Hanashah reading, the New Testament readings today. Porque cuando lleguemos a la lectura del Nuevo Testamento hoy. You must read the New Testament understanding that God does not change his order. Debes entender que el Señor en el, en el Nuevo Testamento no ha cambiado su orden. That there is an order to the universe. Que hay una orden en el universo. There's an order to how the planets circle the sun. Hay una orden que hace que los planetas vayan alrededor del sol. There's even an order to how the stars move around in the heaven. Hay incluso una orden que hace que las estrellas se muevan en el cielo. Because the, 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 the lights of heaven are for times, days, and seasons. Porque las luces en el cielo son para tiempos, temporadas, y uh, estaciones. And you must understand that Jehovah does not change his order even for his son. Y debes entender que Jehovah no cambia su orden ni siquiera para su hijo. And you must have a Hebrew mind understanding. Y tienes que tener un entendimiento hebreo. When you are reading the Brit Hadashah, especially about the holy days and the resurrection. Cuando estás leyendo el Nuevo Testamento, especialmente para los días santos. Okay, now we're going to, you know, we were talking about some things in yesterday's Road to Emmaus class. Ahora vamos a leer en la, en la Ruta de Emmaus en la clase. And you must understand that Jehovah doesn't change his order and his son is, is one with the Father. Ahora vas a entender que Jehovah no cambia su orden y que él y Yeshua son uno. Okay. So when something looks like it changes the order, you must dig deeper into the, the scripture. Cuando miras que algo aparenta que está cambiando el orden, debes buscar más en las escrituras. Okay, now let's go back to verse 14. Vamos de vuelta al versículo 14. You're not to eat bread, dried grain, or fresh grain until the day you bring the offering for your Elohim. This is a permanent regulation through all your generations, no matter where you live. Amen? And we're going to learn about this, this particular verse. Ahora vamos a hablar, a hablar acerca de este versículo en particular. Later on, but we're going to focus on something very important in verse 14 first. Después, y ahora vamos a enfocarnos en algo importante que encontramos en el versículo 14. Because a lot of people, and there's a lot of teachings out there that are not very good. Porque hay mucha gente y hay enseñanzas afuera que no son tan buenas. That say we're only supposed to celebrate the holy days when we live in the land of Israel. Que nos dicen que tenemos que celebrar los días santos solamente cuando estemos en Jerusalén, en Israel. Did not the Eternal One know that Jews would be living all around the globe? No sabía el Eterno que los judíos iban a estar repartidos por todo el mundo. Of course he did. He knew that he claro. would kick them out of Israel. Claro que él sabía que no íbamos a estar afuera de Israel. Because the Father knows all things in all eternity. Porque el Padre sabe todas las cosas en toda la eternidad. But what he's telling us very clearly in verse 14. Pero lo que nos dice claramente en versículo 14. That you're to keep the Shabbat and the holy days for all your generations. Que debes guardar el Shabbat y los días santos por todas tus generaciones. No matter where you live on God's planet. Donde quiera que habites en el planeta de Dios. So if you're going to keep Shabbat. Entonces, si vamos a, a, a observar el Shabbat. Then you have to keep the rest of the holy days. Entonces, también tenemos que observar el resto del día santo. You can't pick and choose which days you want to celebrate. No puedes escoger qué días tú quieres celebrar. Jehovah will not say that you got to keep the law in Israel, but you don't got to keep it in Mexico. Jehovah no va a decir tú solo puedes guardar la Torah en el en en Israel y no en México. Or maybe even if you live in Ecuador or Colombia or somewhere some crazy place like that. O incluso si vives en un lugar loco como Ecuador o Colombia. Even if you're living on the island of Jamaica, ma. Incluso si vives en la isla de Jamaica. Okay, so he doesn't say you got to keep the law in Israel, but you don't have to keep it anywhere else. Él no dice que tienes que observar la ley solamente en Israel y no en otro lado. But in, in the prophet Yeshiahu, Isaiah chapter 42. Pero en el profeta Isaías capítulo 42. 
he knew he would send the Hebrew people out to the world to teach them how to keep the laws. Él sabía que iba a mandar a la gente al mundo para enseñar a la gente a, a, a observar las leyes. So the holy days are, first of all, they're Jehovah's holy day. Así que los días primero, todos los días son de Jehovah. They're not Moses' holy days, they're not Jewish holy days. No son los días santos de Moisés, no son los días santos judíos. They're the king of the universe's holy days. Jehovah Elohim, blessed be his glory in his name. Son los días santos de, de, de fe y bendito sea su nombre. So he says, no matter where you live, Él dice, no importa donde vivas, three times in chapter 23. Tres veces en el capítulo, capítulo 23. In verse 14, verse 21, and verse 31. Eso encontramos en los versículos 14, 21 y 31. He says it one for the spring holy days. Lo dice una vez para los días santos de primavera. Once for the summer holy day. Uno para los días santos de verano. And once for the fall holy days. You got to do these things no matter where you live. Y uno para los días de otoño y dice no importa donde vivas. Now we go back to verse 10 and 11 because this is a very important two verses. Ahora vamos a leer los versículos 10 y 11, que son muy importantes. Tell the people of Israel, after you enter the land, I'm giving you and harvest its ripe crops. You're to bring a sheaf of the first, of the first fruits of your harvest to the Kohen. He's to wave the sheep before Jehovah, that you will be accepted. The Kohen is to wave it on the day after the Shabbat. Amen? Yes. All right, so I, I forgot to bring it home from the congregation, so I don't have it. I just have the barley here. Yo traté de, de yo yo olvidé traer una gavilla de la congregación, así que no la tengo. I don't have my sheep, but I do have barley. No tengo mi gavilla, pero tengo cebada. So this came from a sheep. This is actual barley. Esto es cebada, vino de una gavilla. Because the barley is usually the first thing that comes up in the farms. Porque la, la cebada es lo, lo primero que sale en las uh, granjas. And you would bring your first fruits to the Cohen, the, 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 the priest. Y tú debías traer tus primeros frutos al Cohen o al sumo sacerdote. And then the Cohen would wave this before the Lord on this day. Y el Cohen me sería todo esto al Señor en este día. But let's read when he is supposed to do that because this is a confusing thing for many people. Leamos cuando él tiene que hacer esto, porque esto es una situación confusa para la gente. Let's read verse 10 and 11 again. Leamos otra vez los versículos 10 y 11. Tell the people of Israel, after you enter the land, I'm giving you in the harvest its ripe crops. So to bring a sheaf of the first fruits, sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest to the Kohen. He is to wave the sheep before Jehovah so that you will be accepted. The Kohen is to wave it on the day after the Shabbat. Now, this is very confusing for a lot of people. Esto es algo confuso para mucha gente. Because the, they, they want to start, a lot of Gentiles want to start following God's law. Porque muchos gentiles quieren comenzar a seguir la ley del Señor. Which is a beautiful thing to do. Que es algo hermoso el hacerlo. And they start looking at some of the Orthodox Jewish websites. Y comienzan a buscar en la página, en páginas de judíos ortodoxos. And they, they start looking at their YouTube videos and all this stuff. Y comienzan a seguir sus videos de YouTube y todas estas cosas. And they, they start to count, they're, they're looking what they're doing. Y están observando lo que ellos están haciendo. And the Orthodox Jews start counting the Omer the day los, after Pesach. Y los judíos ortodoxos comienzan a hacer la cuenta del Omer el día eh, en Pesach. The holy days, all the holy days are a Shabbat. Todos los días santos son un Shabbat. But they're not the Shabbat. Pero no son el Shabbat. There's a difference between a Shabbat and the Shabbat. Hay diferencia entre como un Shabbat y el Shabbat. Okay. Holy days are like a Shabbat where we don't cook and we don't have marital relations and we don't go to work. Los días santos son 
como un Shabbat donde no cocinamos, no, no, no salimos a trabajar, no tenemos relaciones maritales. And you don't go do, you don't throw a load of laundry. If you got a laundry in your house, you don't go throw a load of laundry in the laundry room. Si tienes una lavadora en casa, no vas y pones ropa a lavar en la lavadora. Because a, a holy day, a moed, is like a Shabbat. Porque un día santo, un moed, es como un Shabbat. But every seventh day is the Shabbat. Pero cada siete días es el Shabbat. So let's look at verse 11 again. Vamos al versículo 11 otra vez. He is to wave the sheaf before Jehovah that you will be accepted. Cohen is to wave it on the day after the Shabbat. Okay? So it's not the day after Pesach unless it happens to be Pesach is on a Shabbat. No es el día después de Pesach, a no ser que sea que sea Pesach caiga después de Shabbat. Like our Pesach this year was Wednesday night. Como este, este, este año, el Pesach cayó el miércoles en la noche. So the Bikarim does not happen until the day after the Shabbat. El Bikarim sucede después, el, Shabbat, el día después de Shabbat. And when you look in the Hebrew in verse 11, y cuando ves en el Hebreo, en el versículo 11, when you look at the word Shabbat, cuando ves en la palabra Shabbat, It says, Hey, Shin, Bet, Tav. He said, Hey, Shin, Bet, Tav. Meaning the Shabbat. Que significa el Shabbat. He said, Wave the Bikarim after the Shabbat. Que debemos meser el Bikarim después de Shabbat. So if you're following some congregation that's already started their Bikarim counting before today, si tú estás siguiendo una congregación que está ya contando el, el Bikorim desde el día de, de hoy. They are doing rabbinic tradition and it is wrong. Desde el día de Pesach, from Pesach, Robert? Yeah, they, 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 let me say it again. Okay. The rabbis teach the day of Shabbat, you start counting the Omer. En la, los rabinos enseñan que el día de Shabbat comienzas a contar el Omer. But that's not what verse... 11 is telling us. Pero eso no es lo que el versículo 11 nos está diciendo. The day after the Shabbat. El día después del Shabbat. Not, not the, the holy day Shabbat, but the Shabbat. No el día santo como Shabbat, sino el Shabbat. Okay, because you're starting a new week, because it's the first day of the week. Porque estás comenzando una nueva semana, porque es el primer día de la semana. And the Bikarim is about starting a new life. Yeshua rose from the grave to have a new life. Y el Bikarim se trata de cuando Yeshua se despertó de la, del sepulcro comenzando una nueva vida. Now let's go back to verse 14. Vamos de vuelta al versículo 14. You do not to eat bread, dried grain, or fresh grain until the day you bring the offering to your God, your Elohim. This is a permanent regulation through all your generations, no matter where you live. Now, this is a confusing verse for a lot of people. Este es un verso muy confuso para mucha gente. The key about not, because if people, you know, you start to read the law, and that's great. Porque la gente cuando comienza a leer la ley está muy bien. Uh, it says, well, we're not supposed to eat bread. Pero dice, no debemos comer pan. No, you're missing a key word here. Estás perdiendo una palabra clave aquí. Because God says in other parts of the Torah, Porque Dios dice en otras partes de la Torah, especially about the Shemitah, that you're going to eat the stuff that's left over. What you're supposed to be doing with the, you're not supposed to eat any fresh grain. Lo que se supone es que tú no debes comer ningún grano fresco. Until you give Jehovah his Bikarim offering. Hasta que le des a Jehovah su ofrenda de Bikarim. Because the key word is fresh there in verse 14 for that understanding. Porque la palabra clave es fresca para el fresco hasta para el entendimiento. You need the dried grain from last year. Puedes comer el grano seco del año pasado. But you're supposed to give everything, every first fruit offering today. To him. Pero tienes que darle toda la ofrenda fresca de grano 
al Señor hoy día. You're supposed to give him every new thing first. Le debes entregar a él cada cosa nueva primero. Now there's a very special order to everything Jehovah does. Hay una orden especial para todo lo que Jehovah hace. Now let's, let's read verse 14 again. Leamos el versículo 14 otra vez. You're not to eat bread. Dry grain and fresh grain until the day after you bring the offering for your Elohim. This is a permanent regulation for all your generations, no matter where you live. Amen? Amen. Because he's telling us that you're supposed to give every year him first. Dice, nos está diciendo que cada año tienes que entregarle a él primero. Because what that verse is talking about is about the harvest. Porque lo que está hablando de este, este verso principalmente es de la cosecha. How do you get a harvest? ¿Cómo es que obtienes o consigues una cosecha? Well, you got to have the proper temperature. Tienes que tener la temperatura apropiada. You got to have the proper amount of rain. Tienes que tener el amonto apropiado de lluvia. And the Lord is uh, really uh, chastising America here this, uh, this year, uh, the virus and other things. Y el Señor verdaderamente está castigando a América con el virus y otras cosas. It was snowing in parts of America last night. La, ayer en la noche estaba nevando en algunas partes de América. North and South Dakota and many parts of the West were having blizzards. El, el sur y el norte de Dakota y otras partes del lado oeste estaban teniendo condiciones de nieve. So you're not going to get a harvest if the Lord brings snow after you planted your farm. Entonces no vas a tener cosechas si el Señor trae la nieve después de que has plantado tus semillas. So verse 14 was talking about you you have a harvest. Entonces el versículo 14 nos habla de que tuviste una cosecha. You want to thank the Lord for giving you a harvest. Y tú quieres agradecer al Señor por haberte dado una cosecha. Now how did you get that harvest? ¿Cómo es que tú tuviste esta cosecha? You got the proper amount of rain from heaven. Tienes el amonto apropiado de, de la lluvia que cayó del cielo. You got the proper amount of sun from heaven and the proper temperature. Tienes la, la temperatura apropiada y la, la temperatura del sol que viene del cielo. And if you don't want to thank Jehovah after a long, hard winter, you're not a very nice person. Y si no quieres agradecer a Jehová después de un largo y de un invierno, entonces sería otra cosa. What we see in chapter 23 of the book of Leviticus. Lo que estamos viendo en el libro de Levíticos. Is the father is giving us his children guidelines. Es que el padre nos está dando a nosotros, sus hijos, una guía. And he's talking about giving him the grain offering. Y está hablando de dar la, la, la ofrenda de grano. Now, here's a very important part, everybody. Aquí hay una parte importante. Because barley is the first thing that comes up. Porque la cebada es lo primero que sale de la tierra. Now, barley you plant before, at, barley is planted after you harvest last year's crops. El, la, la cebada se, se, se siembra después de que has terminado de cosechar lo último de, 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 la, de, de la cosecha del año pasado. And it's in the ground over the winter. Y la, la cebada se encuentra en el suelo eh, durante todo el invierno. So you have no control over when the Lord brings the barley up. Entonces tú no tienes control de cuando el Señor hará que la cebada salga de la tierra. This is why it's such a disaster. Porque por esta razón es que hay un desastre. If the Lord then gives you real cold temperatures and snow after barley starts to come up. Si el Señor te da temperaturas muy frías cuando la cebada está comenzando a brotar. Now what's good about this, and it's also very good to know with our COVID-19 disaster that's going on. Es bueno saber y necesitamos entender para esta, esta enfermedad del COVID-19. This piece of barley that I'm holding in my hand and up to the camera. Es que este pedacito de barley, esta semilla que estoy sosteniendo en, mi, en la cámara. I'm going to read something about barley 
in English, and Rebbitz and Veronica is going to read it in Spanish. Okay. Barley has chlorophyll, which has many amazing health benefits. It has been shown to speed up the healing of wounds, provide protection against chemicals and radiation, and inhibit the carcinogenic effects of common dietary and environmental toxins. It promotes intestinal regularity. Chlorophyll may also help to increase the number of red blood cells in the body and boost the body's ability to use oxygen. La, la, la propiedad de la, de la cebada tiene clorofila y tiene muchos beneficios sorprendentes para la salud. Se ha demostrado que la, la, la cebada acelera la cicatrización, cicatrización de heridas, proporciona protección contra las sustancias químicas y la radiación e inhibe los efectos cancerígenos de las toxinas comunes y el, y el medio ambiente. Promueve la regularidad intestinal. La clorofila también puede ayudar a aumentar la cantidad de glóbulos rojos en el cuerpo y aumentar la capacidad del cuerpo para usar oxígeno. So what's one of the things that's happening with this COVID-19 plague? ¿Qué es una de las cosas que está sucediendo con esta plaga COVID-19? People are having oxygen problems. La gente está teniendo problemas de oxígeno. So if you start to get sick like Rabed over there. Cuando comienzas a enfermarte como Rabed. You need some barley soup. Necesita sopa de cebada. Because a lot of people are dying, not, not nearly compared to other plagues, but a lot of people are dying. Pero porque mucha gente está muriendo. Because they can't get enough oxygen into their body. Porque no pueden obtener suficiente oxígeno en su cuerpo. So God says, give me the bicarim and I'll bless you. Pero el Señor dice, dame la ofrenda de Bicurim y te bendeciré. So now he says, bring me the first barley offering. Ahora él pide que traigamos la primera ofrenda de cebada. And I'll help your body, and then you, I'll give you more barley. Te daré más cebada. And then you're going to become very healthy because I'm going to give you health food, natural health food. Y te, te, vas a, te vas a curar porque te voy a dar nutrición en la, en la comida. Because during the winter, a lot of people stayed home and then they come back together for Shabbat. Porque después del invierno, cuando la gente en invierno se queda en casa, después vienen a Shabbat. And you're coming together for the biblical holy days. Nos reunimos para los días santos bíblicos. So the Lord says, here, I'm going to bless your farm. Y el Señor dice aquí, yo voy a bendecir, bendecir tu granja. Do you make barley soup or barley, uh, barley bread, barley whatever? Puedes hacer sopa de cebada, pan de cebada o cualquier cosa con cebada. Because your body needs oxygen to fight diseases. Porque tu cuerpo necesita el oxígeno para pelear las enfermedades. Okay, so we're going to follow God's order and we're going to be blessed. Entonces, vamos a seguir el orden del Señor y vamos a ser bendecidos. Everybody learning something here today? Turn on your cameras. Están um, aprendiendo algo el día de hoy. Okay. Yeah, Beth Goyim, we, we, we go into the scriptures real deep. Aquí en Beth Goyim, nos profundizamos en las escrituras. So God is saying, give me the first fruit. El Señor dice, entregame los primeros frutos. <laughs> And I'm going to give you the rest. Y yo te entregaré el resto. Okay, now we're going on to our next scripture reading. Vamos a la siguiente lectura de la escritura. Turn to Deuteronomy, Devarim 26, verse 1 through 11. Vamos a Deuteronomio 26, versículos 1 al 11. I don't have corona, I've got too much talking. La vino no tiene corona, pero habla mucho. But I've got my really good drink. Hi, Allie May. Y por eso está tomando su agua de vitamina. Okay. This has got zinc in it. Get the good thing. Esto tiene zinc y es bueno para el cuerpo. 
In Deuteronomy, Devarim 26, verse 1 through 11, we're talking about the Bikurim. Deuteronomy 26, estamos hablando acerca del Bikurim. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry for coughing in your ear there, buddy. When you have come to the land Jehovah your Elohim is giving you, as your inheritance, take possession of it and settle there. You're to take the first fruits of all the crops the ground yields, which you will harvest from your land that Jehovah your Elohim is giving you. Put them in a basket and go to the place where Jehovah your Elohim will choose to have his name live. You will approach the Cohen holding office at the time and say to him, Today I declare, Jehovah our Elohim, that I have come to the land Jehovah swore to our ancestors that he would give us. The Cohen will take the basket from your hand and put it down in front of the altar of Jehovah your Elohim. And in the presence of Jehovah your Elohim, you are to say, my ancestor was a nomad from Aram. He went down to Egypt, few in number, and stayed. There he became a great, strong, populous nation. But the Egyptians treated us badly. They oppressed us and imposed harsh slavery on us. So we cried out to Jehovah, the Elohim of our ancestors. Jehovah heard us and saw our misery, toil, and oppression. And Jehovah brought us out of Mitzrayim, Egypt, with a strong hand and stretched out arms great terror and with signs and wonders. Now he has brought us to this place and given us a land, a land flowing with halav and devas, milk and honey. Therefore, you, as you see, I have now brought the first fruit of the land, Jehovah, which you, Jehovah, has given me. You then put the, put, the, put the basket down before Jehovah your Elohim, prostrate yourself before Jehovah your Elohim, and take joy all the good that Jehovah Elohim has given you, you, your household, the Levi, and the foreigner with you. Amen? Okay? This passage of Devarim is all about thanking him for redemption. Este pasaje habla completamente acerca de agradecerle por la redención. And that's what today is about, the Bikarim, the resurrection. is. We, we celebrate it. Y ahora este Bikurim se trata de todo, de la resurrección. Because we want to thank him for redemption. We want to thank Yeshua for redeeming the world. Porque queremos agradecer, agradecer por redención, por a Yeshua haber redimido al mundo. Now let's go back to verse 2, please. Vamos de vuelta al versículo 2. Verse number 2, please. Versículo 2. We're to take the first fruits of all the crops the ground yield. Which you will harvest from your land, Jehovah your Elohim is giving you. Put them in a basket and go to the place where Jehovah your Elohim would choose to have his name live. Amen. Now, this was written before we were in the land. Esto fue escrito antes de que estuviéramos en la tierra. This is before, you know, we built the temple. Esto fue escrito antes de tener el templo. Okay. So we got to follow God's order. Entonces debemos seguir el orden del Señor. As you, as you see very clearly in verse number two. Si ves claramente en el versículo número dos. You can see that Jehovah is saying. Puedes ver que Jehovah está diciendo. That you are to bring all the first fruits of the crops the ground yield. Tienes que traerle todas las primicias de que la, que la tierra está dando. Let me say this again. Déjame decirlo otra vez. Jehovah is telling us Jehovah nos está diciendo, to take all the first fruits of all, all the crops the ground yield. Que tienes que traer las primicias de todas las, de todas las cosechas que la tierra está entregando. So what's ever growing, any new grain that's growing. Entonces cualquier nueva cosa verde que está creciendo. Any, um, any uh, you know, fruit tree, any, any, any plant that's growing. Cualquier planta que está creciendo. All the first fruit you got to give to Jehovah, the very, very first things that come up. El, como todo primer fruto tienes que entregarle a Jehovah todo lo que sale primero. Now, if you're going to keep the Shabbat. Ahora, si vas a guardar el Shabbat. You know, we, you know, everybody's keeping Shabbat that's listening to this, or at least most people are. Todos los que están escuchando esto están observando Shabbat, por lo menos uh, la mayoría. If you're going to keep Shabbat, then, then why, why don't you do this? Si vas a observar el Shabbat, ¿por qué no observar esto? Okay. 
Now I'm just here to tell you what it says. If you want to do it, it's up to you. Te estoy diciendo aquí lo que tienes que hacer. Si quieres hacerlo, ya depende de ti. I'm not God. If I were, there would be a lot of dead Democrats. Yo no soy Dios. Si, si sería, ya habría muchos demócratas muertos. Bernie Sanders would be living in Cuba permanently. Uh, Bernie Sanders estuviera viviendo en Cuba por, por el resto de su vida. So, God is God and I'm not. Dios es Dios y yo no soy. So, he's telling us here. Pero él nos está diciendo aquí. If you, you're to take all the first fruits of everything that God has provided for you. Que debes tomar los primeros frutos, todo lo que el Señor te ha proveído. And you're to bring it to him. Y traerlo a él. So if you're going to keep Shabbat, then you got to keep this. Si vas a observar Shabbat, tienes también que observar esto. But most of us, well, a lot of people say, well, I'm not a farmer. Pero mucha gente quizá dirá, pero yo no soy un agricultor. I don't live in a farming community. O no vivimos en una comunidad agrícola. Then what, what do you think this would mean? Entonces, ¿qué significa todo esto? Well, this is between you and God. Esto se trata de, de, entre tú y Dios. What would you offer God if you don't live in a, in a farming community? ¿Qué le ofrecerías a Dios si no vives en una comunidad ag agrícola? You would offer him what you made this week. If you made nothing, then you don't, you, don't make, you don't give him anything. I'm sorry? You would give him what you made this week. That's your first fruit. Okay, le damos lo que, lo que ganaste esta semana. Esos son tus primeros frutos. Verse 2 is telling us you bring all the first fruits of all the crops to ground yield. En el versículo 2 dice que debes traer todos los frutos que la tierra entregue. It isn't how much you offer him. No es cuánto le ofrezcas. But it's that you are offering him what he asked for. Y es, sino que es lo que tú le estás dando de lo que él está preguntando. Now I'm not going to know what you offer him. Between you and God, you and Jehovah. Yo no voy a saber lo que estás ofreciendo, lo que estás ofrendando, porque eso es entre tú y Jehovah. But let me tell you, let me uh, give you a quick understanding. Pero déjame darte un entendimiento breve. If you steal from Jehovah, si tú robas de Jehovah, because he knows what you gave and what you were supposed to give and what you didn't give or did give. Porque él sabe lo que te, tú debías de haber de, dado, pero no diste, pero él sabe cu cuánto debiste haber dado. So if you steal from Jehovah, Entonces, si tú robas de Jehovah, when you ask for something in prayer, say you get sick. Cuando pides algo en oración, digamos, te enferma. What do you think the answer to prayer is going to be? ¿Qué crees que será la respuesta a esa oración? God said to, Jehovah said to, bring the first fruit. Jehovah dice trae los primeros frutos. All the first fruit. Todos los primeros frutos. And then he knows if you did or did not. I, I don't know. Pero él sabe si, sabe si lo hiciste o no, yo no sé. But if you steal from Jehovah, don't go praying to him. Pero si has robado a Jehovah, no le ores a él. But there's a prayer that we're going to say at the end for any of those ones that want to give an offering. Pero vamos a hacer una oración aquí para todos aquellos que quieran hacer esta ofrenda. But should Jew and Gentile give an offering? ¿Será que judío y gentil debe traer una ofrenda? Should Jew and Gentile say the prayer that we're going to say at the end? El judío y gentil debe, ser la, debe decir la oración que vamos a decir al final. Let's read verse 10 and 11 now. Verse 10 and 11. Leamos los versículos 10 y 11. Therefore, as you see, I've now brought the first fruits of the land which you, Jehovah, have given me. You're then to put the basket down before Jehovah your Elohim, prostrate yourself before Jehovah your Elohim, and take joy in all good, all the good that Jehovah your Elohim has given you. You, your household, the Levi, and the foreigner living with you. Amen. Okay, the first thing that you want to understand about these two verses. Lo primero que quieres entender acerca de estos dos versículos. Is you got to have joy in doing what Jehovah has asked you to do. Es que tienes que tener ese deleite haciendo lo que Jehová te ha pedido que, hace, que haga. Tú no tienes que quejarte cuando estás dando la ofrenda. I didn't hear any crying. No, no necesito, yo necesito la ofrenda. 
Oh, madre mio. No, 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 no. Okay. The first thing that in verse 11 it says you want to have joy. La primera parte dice que tienes que tener deleite. Let me let me tell you something that we learned in the scripture. Déjame te digo algo que hemos aprendido en la escritura. When Israel gave to Jehovah with joy. Cuando Israel dio al Señor a Jehovah con gozo. There was peace in the land. Hubo paz en la tierra. En la tierra. When Israel did what Jehovah commanded them to do. Cuando Israel hizo lo que Jehovah le mandó hacer. No enemy could to defeat them. No había enemigo que pueda derrotarlo. Now let's look at verse 11 again, just verse 11. Leamos el versículo 11 otra vez. And take joy in all the good that Jehovah Elohim has given you, your household, the Levi, the foreigner living with you. Amen. Amen. Once again, if we actually take time to read the Torah, una vez más si nos tomamos el tiempo de tomar de leer las escrituras. When we read the scriptures, you know, we see very clearly Cuando leemos las escrituras, podemos ver claramente that there's one law for Jew and Gentile. Que solo hay una ley para los judíos y los gentiles. That's why it's so sad today. Por esto es que hay mucha tristeza hoy. The Gentiles are celebrating Ishtar, Easter. Que los gentiles están celebrando Ishtar o la cuaresma. And the real followers of God are celebrating the resurrection. Yeah, hay otros que celebran la resurrección. And the Bikarim at the same time. Y el Bikarim a la misma vez. We see very clearly from verse 11. Vemos claramente el versículo 11. That it's Jew and Gentile are supposed to do the same thing. Que el judío y gentil hay que, tiene que hacer la misma, um, observar lo mismo. We read verse 5 earlier. Hace poco leímos el versículo 5. And it talked about us being, uh, you know, a nomad. Y you know? hablaba acerca de nosotros siendo nómadas. So you Gentiles were nomad. Los gentiles son, fueron nómadas. And in Romans 11, you're grafted into the Hebrew olive tree, the house of Israel. En Romanos, tú eres injertado al árbol hebreo de Israel. And if you're grafted into the Hebrew house of Israel, Y si eres injertado a la casa hebrea de Israel. Then you are to do the bickering also. Entonces tú, tú tendrás que celebrar el bickering también. Because bickering is all about thanksgiving and redemption. Porque el bickering se trata de agradecimiento y redención. Look at verse 11 again. Veamos el versículo 11 otra vez. Take joy in all good that your Jehovah your Elohim has given you. Your household. The Levi, the foreigner, living with you. Amen? Okay, we're supposed to have joy in all this. About joy in the redemption. Debemos tener alegría en esta redención. We're supposed to thank the Lord for bringing us out of bondage. Tenemos que agradecer, agradecer al Señor por sacarnos de esta esclavitud. And Jew and Gentile are supposed to be giving their offering. Y el judío gentil pueden traer su ofrenda. Okay, now let's go to... Leviticus 7, verse 12. Ahora vamos a Levíticos, capítulo 7, versículo 12. Diacre 7, verse 12. Levíticos, capítulo 7, versículo 12. Because we're talking now about thanksgiving, doing things with joy. Porque estamos hablando acerca de acción de gracias, haciendo las cosas gozosamente. Leviticus, Diacre 7, verse 12. Levíticos 7, versículo 12. Leviticus 7, verse 12. Is everybody learning something today? Give me a thumbs up. Versículo 12. Si están aprendiendo algo, denos el visto bueno. Okay. All right. Leviticus 7, verse 12 says, If a person offers a forgiving thanks, he's offer it <coughs> with a thanksgiving sacrifice. Of unleavened cakes mixed with olive oil, matzah spread with olive oil, and cakes made of fine flour mixed with olive, mixed with olive oil and fried. Amen? Well, we're keying on for this year, but since we're all at our homes together. I'm sorry? Well, we're keying on for verse 12 this year. Oh, nos estamos enfocando en el versículo 12 porque estamos todos en casa. What we're, what we're focusing on this year is this. 
lo que nos estamos enfocando este año es en that we're giving a sacrifice to the Lord. Que estamos haciendo un sacrificio al Señor. That the bickering is about a thanksgiving sacrifice. Que el bickering se trata de una ofrenda de acción de gracias. And we talked about not being a farming community anymore. Y hablábamos de que no somos una comunidad agrícola. So you're sacrificing some monetary thing. Entonces, tú estarás sacrificando cosas monetarias. But doing it with thanksgiving. Pero lo harás con acción de gracias. The bickering understanding is about the joy that happens when you celebrate the bickering. El entendimiento de bickering es que tú, cuando celebres bickering, estarás haciéndolo con deleite. Bickering is about joy. El bickering se trata de gozo, de estar jubiloso. And you need to understand that when we go to the Brit Hadashah readings and why Yeshua chose this day raised from the grave. Necesitas entender eso porque cuando nos vayamos al Nuevo Testamento vas a comprender por qué Yeshua resucitó en este día. You can't read the Gospels or understand Yeshua's ministry. No puedes leer los Evangelios o entender el ministerio de Yeshua. Unless you understand it from a Hebrew messianic understanding. A no ser que lo entiendas de un Entendimiento hebreo mesiánico. Bickering is about joy and redemption. Bickering se trata de gozo y entendimiento. Turn to Psalm 50, verse 22 and 23. Vamos a leer el Salmo 50, versículos 22 y 23. We want to learn about what this thanks offering is all about. Queremos aprender de qué se trata todo esta ofrenda de agradecimiento. Psalm 50, verse 22 and 23. Salmo 50, versículos 22 al 23. Psalm 50, verse 22 and 23. Salmo 50, versículos 22 y 23. Psalm 50, verse 22 and 23. Give you a second to turn to it because I can't see everybody on my screen here. On the earth. Consider this, you who forget Elohim, for I will tear you to pieces with no one to save you. Whoever offers thanksgiving as his sacrifice honors me. To him, who God, who goes the right way, I will show the salvation of God. Amen? Now, in this particular uh, verse 23, in the versículo 23 in particular, the word salvation is not Yeshua. La palabra para la palabra hebrea para salvación no es Yeshua. Okay, it is. So I'm going to read it in English, and Reverend Sembronica is going to do it in Spanish. Salvation is H three four six eight. It's a Hebrew root word Yesha, not Yeshua. It means number one, deliverance, salvation, rescue, safety, welfare. Para la palabra salvación es H3468. La palabra hebrea es Yesha, nadie Yeshua. Número uno, liberación, salvación, rescate, seguridad y bienestar. So if you okay. celebrate the bickering with thanksgiving. Si, ofre, si celebras el bickering con agradecimiento. If you honor Jehovah Elohim with the bickering offering. Si honras a Jehová Elohim con una ofrenda de, 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 de Bikurim. <laughs> He's saying to us in verse 23. Él nos está diciendo a nosotros en el versículo 23. I'm going to rescue you in times of trouble. Te voy a rescatar en tiempos de problema. I'm going to show you safety in times of trouble. Te voy a mostrar seguridad en tiempos de problema. I'm going to show you welfare in times of trouble. Te voy a mostrar bienestar durante esos tiempos de problemas. Let's read verse 23 with that understanding. Leamos el versículo 23 con ese entendimiento. Whoever offers thanksgiving as a sacrifice honors me. And to him who goes, who goes the right way, I will show the salvation of Elohim. Amen. 
So he says, if you offer bickering with thanksgiving. Dice que aquellos que ofrecen el bickering con agradecimiento. Or you give a thanksgiving offering at any time during the year. O das o haces una ofrenda de agradecimiento en cualquier momento del año. You honor Jehovah. Estás honorando o honrando a Jehovah. You honor Elohim. Estás honrando a Elohim. And he remembers what you do. Y él recuerda lo que tú haces. And he said, if you go the right way. Y dice, si vas por lo que es correcto. And he's going to show you the salvation of Elohim, the Yesha of Elohim. Entonces, él te va a mostrar la Yesha de Elohim. He's going to show you the rescue of Elohim. Te va a mostrar el rescate de Elohim. The deliverance. La, la liberación. Okay. Now today is the Bikarim. Hoy día es el Bikarim. And the Bikarim comes after the winter. Y el Bikarim viene después del invierno. Okay, it's the third biblical holy day. Es el tercer día bíblico del año. Because we got Pesach, Hagmata, now Bikarim. Porque tenemos Pesach, Hagmata y ahora Bikarim. So Psalm 50 verse 23 says, is telling us. Salmo 50 versículo 23 dice. That if you give him the thanks offering. Que si le das una ofrenda de agradecimiento. If you give him the first stuff, he blesses the first fruit. Que si le das lo primer, la primicia, él bendecirá la primicia. He blesses the first fruit with a double portion back to you. El defend, el, el bendecirá la primera porción de, de, de fruto de, de, doblándola. Okay. Blessing, he blesses the first fruit, the bicarim. El bendice la primera, los primeros frutos de bicarim. With a double portion back to you. Con una porción doble para ti. Now remember that for later on during the lesson. Recuerda eso para después de la lección. But if you give him the first fruit joyfully, thankfully, porque se has dado los primeros frutos gozosamente con deleite, then he'll deliver you when the time when times are not good. Entonces el Señor te liberará cuando los tiempos no estén buenos. But one of the other things about bickering, which is many of us lack, una de las cosas que de bickering que nosotros nos falta, bickering is about trusting Jehovah. El bicorim es confiar en Jehová. Turn to Psalm 107, verse 6 and 8. Uh, Vamos a leer el Salmo 107. Verse 4 through 8. Versículo 4 al 8. Psalm 107, verse 4 through 8. Salmo 107, versículos 4 al 8. Psalm 107, verse 4 through 8. Salmo 107, versículos 4 al 8. Psalm um, 107, verse 4 through 8. Everybody can turn your camera on so I can see. Salmo 107, versículos 4 al 8. Okay. You can turn your camera on so I can see if you're paying attention. All, all uh, people that don't have their... Psalm 107, verse 4 through 8. Salmo 107, versículos 4 al 8. They wandered in the desert on paths through the ways without finding any inhabited city. They were hungry and thirsty. Their life was, being, was ebbing away. In their trouble, they cried to Jehovah, and he rescued them from their distress. He led them by a direct path to a city where they could live. Let them give thanks to Jehovah for his grace, his wonders, bestowed on all humanity. Amen? Okay, so we should give thanks. Vemos que tenemos que dar ale, uh, agradecimiento. This passage that we just read is all about redemption. Este pasaje que acabamos de leer se trata de la redención. We were wandering the desert. Estás caminando en el desierto. We had trouble in the desert. Tuviste problemas en el desierto. We were distressed in the desert. 
Estabas estresado en el desierto. And then he said, here, I'm going to give you this place to live. Y dijo, Señor, entonces te voy a dar este lugar donde vivir. And the reason we were in the desert is because we weren't following the laws of God in the first place. Y la razón que estábamos en el desierto es porque no seguimos las leyes de Dios a primera, a primera mano. But he showed us grace and mercy. Pero él nos ha mostrado gracia y misericordia. And he gave us a place to live. Y nos dio un lugar para vivir. Okay, let's look at verse number six, please. Veamos al versículo seis. In their trouble, they cried to Jehovah, and he rescued them from their distress. Amen? Amen. Bikarim is about no more, no more stress, no more distress. Because Pesach was about distress. Porque la Pascua significaba de las, de las angustias. What do you mean Pesach is about distress? Porque, ¿por ¿qué quieres decir que Pesach se trata de angustia? First Pesach, where were we living? Where were we living? ¿Dónde estábamos viviendo en la primera Pesach, en la primera Pascua? In Egypt, right? En Egipto. En Egipto, well, ¿verdad? Why were we there? ¿Por qué estábamos allí? We were slaves. Nosotros fuimos esclavos. So Bikarim is about understanding you were slaves and now you want to give Back. The ultimate goal is that the Lord gives back to you a new life once you die in this life. Let's look at verse number eight again, please. Leamos el versículo ocho otra vez. Verse number eight. Versículo ocho. Let them give thanks to Jehovah for his grace, for his wonders bestowed on humanity. Amen? You yeah. thought grace was a New Testament understanding? Pensaron que esto solamente era un entendimiento del Nuevo Testamento? El Bikarim is all about grace. El Bikarim se trata todo de la gracia. Because it's about a thanks offering. Porque se trata de una ofrenda de agradecimiento. Thanking the Lord for what he did for you. Agradeciendo al Señor lo que ha hecho por ustedes. When he could have destroyed each one, each, each and every one of us for breaking his laws. Cuando pudo haber destruido a cada uno de nosotros. He's saying, give me a thanks offering. Él dice, dame una ofrenda de agradecimiento. And you're giving thanks because you, you realize, in verse 8, you've been shown grace. Y le das el agradecimiento porque te diste cuenta en el versículo 8 que se te mostró la gracia. And in the Torah reading, y en la lectura de la Torah, you know, he was, the original part was talking about giving him, giving Jehovah the fruit of the earth. Estaban hablando acerca de darle a Jehovah el fruto, el primer fruto de la tierra. Who grew the fruit? Who grew the... the, the ¿Quién hizo the, que el fruto creciera? Who grew, the, who grew the produce out of the ground? ¿Quién hizo que la, 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 los frutos salieran de la, del suelo? Did you do it or did Jehovah do it? Lo hiciste tú y Jehovah lo hizo. Jehovah did it and you're just giving him back what is his anyway. Yo, Jehovah lo hizo y tú, tú le estás devolviendo lo que le pertenece a él. So you want to give him thanks, right? Y quieres darle gracias. Because without Jehovah, nothing comes up. Porque sin Jehovah nada brotará. Without Jehovah being in your life, nothing is going to work. Si Jehovah, si, si Jehovah no esté en tu vida, nada trabajará. Amen. I hear it, I heard an amen. All right, so now let's go to let's go to prophecy. Let's go to Hosea um, chapter 14. Vámonos a profecía, vámonos a Hoseas capítulo 14. This is all about the Bikarim and what we're to do today. Todo esto se trata del Bikarim y todo lo que debemos hacer hoy. It's all about the resurrection, about what today is all about. Se trata de la resurrección, el día de hoy se trata de eso. Because resurrection is about a seed that died. Porque la resurrección se trata de la semilla que tuvo que morir. When you plant crops, those are dead seeds. Cuando plantas tus uh, tierra, tu, tus semillas, esas son semillas muertas. This piece of barley in my hand. 
este poco de, 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 de este, este, esta cebada en, que tengo en mi mano is dead. está muerta. Doesn't produce anything unless you put it in the ground and it has to die first before it can produce life. No produce nada, no sé que la pongas en la tierra y ahí comienza a brotar. The seed has to die to bring life. La semilla tiene que morir para que haya vida. Well, we're talking about thanking him with, a, with an offering in the physical, but also something spiritual. Tenemos que agradecerle con una ofrenda de lo, de, no solo de lo físico, pero espiritual. Hosea chapter 14, verse 1 and 2. Everybody got it? Hosea capítulo 14, versículos 1 and 2. Return, Israel, to Jehovah your Elohim, for your guilt has made you stumble. Take words with you and return to Jehovah. Say to him, forgive all my all guilt and accept what is good. We will pay instead of bulls the offering of our lips. Amen. Let's read verse 2 again, please. Leamos el versículo 2 otra vez. Take words with you and return to Jehovah. Say to him, forgive all guilt and accept what is good. We'll pay instead of bulls the offering from her lips. Amen? At the end of this service, I'm going to put up a prayer on the screen. Al final de servicio, voy a poner una oración en las pantallas. We're going to do it in English and then I'm going to put it up in Spanish. Habrá una en inglés y habrá otra en español. But it's not enough to give the Jehovah an offering. You have to say something that was commanded. Pero no es suficiente decir a Jehovah, a dar a Jehovah, sino decirla, pronunciar estas palabras. Let's look at verse 2 again. Uh, revisemos el versículo 2 otra vez. Take words with you and return to Jehovah. Say to him, forgive all guilt and accept what is good. We will pay instead of bulls the offering of our lips. Amen? Amen. So here, you also have to thank him. Aquí vemos que también tienes que agradecerle. The offering is not just waving the barley. La ofrenda no es solamente darle la cebada. The offering is not just what you put in the basket. La ofrenda no es solamente lo que vas a poner en la canasta. The offering is coming from your lips. La ofrenda es lo que sale de tus labios. Because remember, Yeshua said, comes out of the mouth is coming from your heart. Por, recuerda lo que dijo Yeshua, que lo que sale de tu boca sale de tu corazón. Remember, we talked about, <coughs> somebody asked, a kosher. Uh, recuerda que eso era cuando él habló acerca de lo que era kosher. And Yeshua said, kosher is not what you put into your mouth, but what comes out of your mouth. Yeshua dijo, Kosher no es lo que entra por tu boca, sino lo que sale de tu boca. He's not putting away the Torah because that would contradict his father. No significa que con eso ya no debemos observar la Torah porque eso sería contradecir al Padre. He's talking about an offering from our lips. Pero está hablando de una ofrenda de nuestros labios. Now we got, now we got the basic of Bikarim. Ahora tenemos lo básico de Bikarim. Now remember, everything... In the Brit Hadashah must be thought about in a Hebraic understanding. Ahora recuerden que todo en el Brit Hadashah tiene que tener un entendimiento hebraico. For God does not, the Father does not change in Malachi 3.6. Porque eh, Jehovah no cambia en, en Malachi 3.6. Everything that Yeshua did and still does. Todo lo que Yeshua hizo y aún no hace. Has to line up with the word of the Tanakh, the Old Testament. Tiene que alinear con la palabra del Antiguo Testamento. So now we're going to talk about the resurrection being on the Bikarim, first fruit. Y ahora vamos a hablar de la resurrección como Bikarim en los primeros frutos. And why it had to be on this holy day that Yeshua rose from the grave. Y por qué tuvo que suceder en este día de Bikarim que el Señor se resucitó de la muerte. Because he didn't, if he didn't raise this particular day of the week, porque si él no hubiera resucitado en este día particular de la semana, on this, on this day that we are on, two thousand years later, this exact este, day, 
en este día exacto que estamos dos años, dos mil años después. And it doesn't fit the prophecies or the scripture. Entonces, no encajaría en la escritura, en la, en la profecía. So let's turn to Matthew chapter 28. Vámonos a Mateo capítulo 28. Mateo chapter 28, verse 1 through 6. Mateo 28, versículos 1 al 6. Matthew 28, verse 1 through 6. Mateo 28, versículos 1 al 6. Matthew 28, verse 1 through 6. Mateo 28, versículos 1 al 6. After Shabbat, the next day was dawn. Miriam of Magdala and the other Miriam went to see the grave. Suddenly there was a violent earthquake. For an angel of Jehovah came down from heaven, rolled away the stone, and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were as white as snow. His hearts were so terrified at him that they, they trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Don't be afraid. I know you are looking for Yeshua who was executed on the cross. He is not here because he, had, he has been raised just as he said. Come and look at the place where he lay. Amen? All right, so let's go back to verse number one. Veamos el versículo uno. Verse number one, please. Versículo uno, por favor. After Shabbat, as the next day was dawning, Miriam of Magdala and the other Miriam went to see the grave. Amen. Now, what did we start out in, in Leviticus with? ¿Cómo comenzó en Leviticus 23? Remember earlier in, in today's lesson, we, we read Leviticus 23? Recuerda que al principio de la lección leímos Leviticus 23. And there's something that happens on this, after the Shabbat, after Pesach. Y vimos que pasó algo en el día de en el Shabbat después de Pesach. Remember, we were talking yesterday, especially in Road to Emmaus. Recuerdan que estábamos hablando ayer, especialmente en la ruta de Maús. That Yeshua ate the Pesach with his Talmudim. Que Yeshua comió de la Pascua con su Talmudim. Remember Wednesday night we did our whole Seder. Recuerdan miércoles en la noche celebramos nuestro, nuestro Seder. Just like Yeshua did his whole Seder with his Talmudin, as it said in the Gospel of Luke. Así como Yeshua hizo su Seder con sus Talmudin en el Evangelio de Lucas. So now we read Matthew 28, verse 1. Ahora leemos Mateo 28, versículo 1. Let's read 28, verse 1 again. Leamos versículo, 8, versículo 1 del capítulo 28. Okay. After Shabbat, the next day was dawning. Miriam and Magdala and the other Miriam went to see the grave. Amen? What do we do on... What did Leviticus say we do on the day after Shabbat? ¿Qué dice Levítico que debemos hacer en el día después de en el Shabbat después de Pesach? O de día después de Shabbat, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was going to add the Pesach thing. You know, we had Pesach and then we do Shabbat and then what do we do after Shabbat? Tenemos Pesach, después tenemos el Shabbat porque hacemos después de Shabbat. We do the Bikurim. Celebraremos el Bikurim. So, Miriam of Magdala went to the tomb when? Miriam of Magdala, de Magdala fue a la tumba cuando? Let's read verse 1 again. Leamos el versículo 1 otra vez. After Shabbat, as the next day was dawning, Miriam of Magdala and the other Miriam went to see the grave. Amen. When did the Bikarim start? Cuando comenzó el Bikarim? Last night at sundown. La noche anterior a la tarde. After the Shabbat of Pesach, a Shin Betav. Después de Shabbat Pesach. We have the Bikurim. Tuvimos el Bikurim. When did Yeshua raise from the grave? Cuando Yeshua se resucitó del sepulcro. After the third day. Después del tercer día. This is now the after the third day. Ahora es el día después del 
este día es después de los, del tercer día. That's why we had yesterday's lesson, part number two. Por eso es que tuvimos nuestra lección, parte número dos. Because Yeshua, Miriam of Magdala is going on hey, Bicarim. Por el, porque Miriam de Magdala fue en Bicarim. Because this is a special day for the Father. Porque este es un día especial para el Padre. Everything has to line up with the order of Torah. Todo tiene que alinearse con la orden de la Torah. Yeshua did not here come here to break the Torah. He came here to be the Messiah. Yeshua no vino acá a, a, a quebrantar la Torah, sino para ser el, el Mesías. So everything Yeshua did, even in death, was to glorify Father and the Torah. Todo lo que hizo Yeshua, incluso en su muerte, era para glorificar al Padre y a la Torre. Now, is everybody supposed to celebrate the Bikurim? Se supone que todos deben celebrar el Bikurim. What did we read in the Torah earlier? Que leímos en la Torah hace poco. It's for Jew and Gentile, right? Esto es para el judío y el gentil. It's a special day for the Father. Es un día especial para el Padre. It's a special day for Jew and Gentile because it's not es, Easter, it's Bikarim. Es un día especial para el judío y el gentil porque no es la, la cuaresma, sino que es Bikarim. And you'll understand that later when we get to Revelation. Y entenderás esto después cuando lleguemos a Apocalipsis. Now let's say, let's read verse 1 again. Leamos el versículo 1 otra vez. After Shabbat, as the next day was dawning, Miriam uh, Magdala and the other Miriam went to see the grave. Amen. <coughs> so these two women go to the grave on Abikarim. Estas mujeres van al sepulcro durante Bikarim en los primeros frutos. And they go to the tomb on Bikarim, first fruit. Se van al sepulcro en Bikarim los primeros frutos. Because it's a special day for the Father. Porque es un día especial para el Padre. It's a special day for the world. Es un día especial para el mundo. Remember, it's all about him, the Father Recuerda. and the Son and the Spirit. Recuerda que se trata acerca de él, del Padre, el Hijo y el Espíritu. This day is about joy. Este día se trata del gozo. This day is about redemption. Este día se trata de la redención. So Yeshua raises from the grave on the day of joy and redemption. Porque Yeshua se resucitó en el día de redención y gozo, en el día del Bikurim. And we're to remember Jehovah's days. Ahora tenemos que recordar los días de Jehovah. What did we What did we read earlier? If you remember his days, he's going to remember you, right? Recuerda lo que él dijo en las escrituras anteriores que lo recuerdas a él y él te recordará a ti. Forget his days and he's going to forget you. Remember what we read? Olvida esos días y él te olvidará. Recuerda lo que él dijo. Remember that psalm with the Yeshua, not the Yeshua in it? Recuerda el salmo donde decía Yeshua y no Yeshua. Now let's look at verse 6. Let's go on to verse 6. Matthew 28. Leamos versículo 6. He is not here because he has been raised, just as he said. Come look at the place where he lay, amen? amen? Okay. So here Yeshua is raised as the first fruit of the dead. Yeshua aquí ha sido resucitado como los primeros frutos de la muerte. Remember we were reading Leviticus? Leviticus? Recuerda que leímos en Levítico. That we're to bring an offering from the dead. Que debemos de traer una ofrenda de la muerte. What do you mean offering from the dead? ¿Qué quieres decir con la ofrenda de lo muerto? The seed has to die. La semilla debe morir. So that we can have more fruit come out of the dead seed. Así podemos tener más fruto. Bikarim is, about, Bikarim is about putting your seed, your dead seed in the ground. Last year. 
Vicorim se trató de poner tus semillas muertas el año pasado. And then you're now giving back to the Lord what was raised from the dead. Y ahora le estás entregando al Señor lo que fue uh, brotado de la muerte. Vicorim is about great joy. Vicorim se trata del gran gozo. So let's look at verse 6 again. Leamos el versículo 6 otra vez. The angel said he's not here because he has been raised, just as he said, come and look at the place where he lay, amen? amen. <laughs> Imagine the angel, you know, it's like, you think he said, he, he's not here. Imagínate tú mirar al ángel y que te diga, no está aquí. He's been raised from the dead. He ha resucitado la muerte. So that would be the devil's angels. Serían los demonios de, 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 de los ángeles del demonio. The, the devil's angels would be said that Yeshua was raised by the Father from the dead. Los demonios, los ángeles de los demonios serían que están tristes porque Yeshua resucitó de la muerte. But you gotta read it like the way the angel most likely said it. Tienes que leerlo como el ángel lo hubiera, lo hubiera dicho. Verse number six again. Versículo número seis. He's not here because he's been raised just as he said. Come and look in the place where he lay. Amen? Amen. Because he's been raised from the grave on the day of Vicarim. Porque él fue levantado de la muerte en el día de Vicarim. Just like the psalm said. Así como en el salmo dice. Now, Matthew 28, verse number one, we had after Shabbat, right? Ahora en Mateo 28, versículo uno, dice después de Shabbat. Okay. So we need confirmation that they're at the grave on the day after Shabbat. Tenemos confirmación que él salió de la tumba en el día después de Shabbat. So now go to the Gospel of Yochanan, chapter 20, John chapter 20. Ahora vamos al Evangelio de Juan, capítulo 20. Juan. Juan. Juan, 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 Juan. Yochanan, chapter 20. Yochanan. Juan, capítulo 20. Anybody learn anything? Adrian, you have to something? Ali, you learning something? John, chapter 20, verse 18. Juan, capítulo 20, Johan, capítulo 20, versículos 1 a 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Miriam the Magdala went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she came running to Shimon Kepha, the other Talmud, one Yeshua loved, and said to them, They've taken the Lord out of the tomb, and I don't know where they put him. And Kepha and the other Talmud started for the tomb. Both ran, but the other Talmud outran Kepha and reached the tomb first. Stooping down, he saw the linen burial sheets lying there, did not go in. Then following him, Shimon Kepha arrived and saw the burial sheets lying. Also the cloth that had been around his head, lying not with the sheets, but separate place, and still folded up. The other Talmud who had arrived at the tomb first also went in, saw, he trusted. And not yet come to understand how teaches that Messiah has asked to raise from the dead. So the Talmud returned home. Miriam stood outside crying. As she cried, she bent down and peered into the tomb. Saw two angels in white sitting the body of Yeshua had been. One at the head, one at the feet. Why are you crying? they asked. They took my Lord, said to them. I don't know where they have put him. As she said this, she turned around and saw Yeshua standing there, but she didn't know it was he. Yeshua said to her, Lady, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? Thinking he was a gardener, she said to him, oh, You're the one who carried him away. Just tell me where, where you put him, and I'll go and get him myself. She was said to her, Miriam. Turning, she cried to him, and he even said to her, Raboni, stop holding on to me. Stop holding on to me, she was said to her. 
because I haven't yet come back to the Father. Go tell my brothers and tell them that I'm going back to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdal went to the Talmudian and with the news that she had seen the Lord and she had, he had told her this. Amen? Okay, let's go back to verse number one. Vamos de vuelta al versículo 1. What a great passage. Es un pasaje hermoso. Just such amazing things that happen. You've got to put yourself in that. Es cosas fascinantes que han sucedido. Like I said yesterday, you've got to put yourself in looking through, like you're watching it for yourself. Uh, como dije ayer, ustedes deben imaginarse que lo están mirando ustedes mismos. We need confirmation of what day it is. Pero estamos confirmación de qué día es. Go back to verse number one, Yochanan 20, verse one. Vamos a Juan capítulo 20, versículo 1. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdala went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So it's the first day of the week. Es el primer día de la semana. We, we know that this is a confirmation from Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28. Sabes que esto es una confirmación de Mateo, capítulo 28. What happens on the first day of the week after Pesach? ¿Qué pasa en el primer día de la semana después de la Pascua? It's the Bikurim. Es Bikurim. Everything lines up. Word of God, the Torah. Todo se alinea con la palabra de Dios y la Torah. So, this resurrection happened day on his holy day. Esta resurrección sucedió hoy en su día santo. And this year it all lines up perfectly. Este año todo se alineó perfectamente. But it's interesting that we're being prevented from being together in the same building to worship together. Lo que es in interesante es que se nos ha prohibido el estar juntos en este día. The Lord is saying, would you still do it in your own home. El Señor nos está diciendo si aún celebraríamos en nuestras propias casas. Let's read verse 1 again, please. It's very important. Leamos el versículo 1 otra vez. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary and Magdala went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed. And so it's important to understand it's the first day of the week. Underline that in your Bible. Es importante el señalar que dice aquí el primer día de la semana. I'm writing, I'm writing the margin next to it, Bikarim, first fruit. Y escriban, no, escriban en el margen a un lado que este primer día es Bikarim. Now it's still dark because when does Bikarim begin? Aún sigue oscuro porque cuando es que comienza Bikarim? Hebrew days go from sundown to sundown. Los días hebreos van desde la tarde cera a la tarde cera. So the Bikarim began last night where I am at 7.33 p.m. Bikurim comenzó ayer a las 7 y 30. So it's still dark. Y aún está oscuro. John 20, verse 1, it's still dark, but it's still the Bikurim. Juan 21 dice que está oscuro, era aún el Bikurim. Now let's go down to verse number 4, because now we're going to get some parallels going. Veamos el versículo 4 y vamos a poner las cosas en paralelo. John 20, verse 4, John 20, verse 4. Juan 20, versículo 4. The other, they both ran, but the other Talmud outran Kef and reached the tomb first. Amen? Sí. Now, why, why do we care that they ran to the tomb? ¿Por qué nos debe importar que ellos corrieron al sepulcro? Because when we were leaving Egypt after the Pesach, porque cuando estábamos saliendo de Egipto después de la Pascua, and the, the, red, the Red Sea parted for us, y el uh, mar de los juncos se separó para nosotros. We had to get to the other side of the Reed Sea. Tuvimos que llegar al otro lado de este mar de los juncos. You got the Egyptian army chasing you. Do you think you're going to walk? Tienes al el ejército de los de los egipcios siguiéndote. ¿Crees tú que vas a cor, vas a caminar? You're going to move as fast as you humanly possibly can. Vas a tratar de ir lo más pronto que tú puedas humanamente. So here these two Jews are running to the tomb. 
aquí estos dos judíos están corriendo a la, a la tumba. Now here, when we were running through the Reed Sea, aquí cuando estábamos corriendo por medio del mar de los juncos, because they have found the chariots in the Reed Sea, porque han encontrado restos de los de los carruajes en el mar de los juncos. The Egyptian chariots, they found the Egyptian chariots. Encontraron a, a carruajes egipcios. Okay, they're in 3,000 feet of water. Y se encuentran a 3,000 pies de agua. Okay, so when you're going, when we were leaving Egypt and Pharaoh was chasing us, there's 3,000 feet of water on either side of us. Cuando estábamos escapando del faraón y estábamos cruzando ese mar, estábamos rodeados de unas paredes de tres mil pies de agua. Me, I'm not walking. I'm running this, I'm moving as fast as I can to get to the other side. Y yo no caminaré, sino me correré lo más pronto para pasar al otro lado. What do you think, Robert Sopranic? Are you going to be just walking? Hey, wow, well, that's pretty cool. I don't think so. <laughs> I would be... I would beat you, Robbie. <laughs> uh, I'm like, yeah, you probably, with the way my body feels, you probably would beat me. <laughs> okay, so they ran to the tomb on Bikarim. Están corriendo a la tumba en el Bikarim. Because this is the fulfillment of the prophecy. Porque este es el cumplimiento de la profecía. Now let's go to verse number 7, John 20, verse number 7. Ahora vamos a leer Juan capítulo 20, versículo 7. Also the cloth that had been around his head Lying not with the other, with the sheets, but a separate place, and still folded up. Amen. Yeah. Why is that one? I thought you know the shrouded Torin, you know, on his face. Pero por qué ese sudario fue puesto a un lugar aparte? Why is this cloth folded up, not with the other one? Por qué este sudario que estaba en su cabeza está a un lado y no con el resto de los de, de los niños. What does this mean? Why, why, why is this? What does this mean? ¿Qué significa esto? It means Yeshua is telling us we're going to be back. Por Yeshua nos está dejando saber que él regresará. Bikarim is about giving back. De Bikarim se trata de de, de de dar de vuelta. Yeshua says, I'm going to be back. I told you I'd be back. Yeshua dijo, voy a regresar. Te digo, regresaré. I told you I was going to die and I'm going to be back. Voy a morir, pero yo regresaré. Now let's go to Luke chapter 24, verse 13 through 34. Vamos a Lucas 24, versículos 13 al 34. Luke 24, verse 13 through 34. Lucas 24, versículos 13 al 34. Chapter 24, verse 13 to 34. Lucas capítulo 24, versículos 13 al 34. That same day, two of them were going toward the village, about seven miles from Yerushalayim, called Emea. And they were talking with each other about all the things that had happened. As they talked and discussed, Yeshua himself came up, walked along with them. Something kept them from recognizing. He asked them, talking about with each other, walk along. They stopped short, their face downcast. One of them named Cleopas answered him, You're the only person staying in Jerusalem that doesn't know, know the things that have been going on but the last few days. Yeah. He said them things about Yeshua from the Tzadet. He was a prophet and proved it by all the things he did and said before, before Jehovah and all the people. Our head Kohanim and our leaders handed him over so that he could be sentenced to death to be executed on a cross like a criminal. And we had hoped that he would be the one to liberate Israel. Besides all that, today is the third day since the incident happened. This morning, some of the women astounded us. They were at the tomb early. Couldn't find his body, so they came back. They also reported that they'd seen a vision of angels who say he's alive. Some of our friends went to the tomb, and they found it exactly as the women had said. They didn't see him. Said to them, 
foolish people. So unwilling to put your trust in everything the prophets told. Didn't the Messiah have to die like this? For entering his glory? And starting with Moshe and all the prophets, he explained to them the things that he found throughout the Tanakh concerning him. He approached the village where they were going and he made as if you're going on, on further, farther. They held him back saying, stay with us, it's almost evening. Heading back. When he went in and stayed with them. As he was reclining with them, at the table he took the, took the matzah, made a brachah, and broke it and handed it to them. And their eyes were open and they recognized him, but the it became invisible to them. They said to each other, didn't our hearts burn inside of us and spoke to us on the road, opening up the Tanakh to us? They got up at once and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together with their friends, saying, it's true, the Lord has risen. risen. Shimon saw him. Amen? Back to verse 14 and 15. Father, give me, give me just that one minute. I'm uh, going to use the headphones. Your voice is coming in going. Right. Anybody else has my voice coming in? My voice coming in okay, everybody? Adriana, is it coming in okay? okay. Tiffany, are you hearing me okay? I'm waiting on Rebbe and Veronica. Momento, por favor. We can't hear you well. You cannot? It goes on and off. Off and on. I know everybody else is saying it's okay. I'll try to talk louder. How's that? Okay. All right. I know where it was Veronica. I can't hear you, Rebel. Going back to verse 14 and 15, everybody. You unmuted, but I cannot hear you. Change your mic setting. Uh, can't hear you, Vero. Sounds a little dry. This is a moment where you can go to the bathroom. Got a little bit more to go here. Intermission popcorn time. Can't hear you yet. One moment, please. How was the worship? How was the worship today, everybody? I think he says it was good. You can actually hear us today. Can't hear you yet, Vero. Okay, no, you cannot hear me. I can hear you now. You can hear me now? Okay, great, All right. great, great. All right, let's go to Luke 24, verse 14 and 15. Vamos a Lucas, capítulo 24, versículos. What verse are? 14 and 15. 14 and 15. Okay, as we were talking with each other about all these things that had happened, as they talked and discussed, Yeshua himself came up alone. Walked along with them, amen. The Lord, the Lord is you know, Messiah Yeshua is walking on the road in the desert. Rabbi, could you repeat that again? I'm sorry. The Lord the Messiah is walking along the road in the desert with these two men. El uh, Señor, el Mesías está caminando una larga distancia en el desierto con estos hombres. 
Why is he walking along the road with them? ¿Por qué él está caminando en la ruta con ellos? Because Yeshua the angel also walked with us in the desert after the Pesach. Porque el ángel de Yeshua caminó con nosotros después de la, de la Pascua. Because it says in the Torah that the angel that has a name inside him was guiding us through the desert. Porque dice en la Torah que el ángel que tenía el nombre de él dentro, el nombre de Jehová en él, nos guió lejos de Egipto. Now we're going to move to verse 21. Ahora vamos al versículo 21. Now this verse is going to be very important. Este versículo va a ser muy importante. Especially after our discussion yesterday in the Road to Emmaus class after Shabbat. Especialmente después de nuestra Okay, verse 21. Can't hear you. Verse 21. 21. Okay. We had hoped that he would be the one to liberate Israel. Besides all that, today is the third day since these things happen. Amen? Amen. So if you're reading in the English, si estás leyendo en el inglés, you think it's the third day, it's not the fourth day. Tú, pi tú piensas que es el tercer día, no el cuarto día. Now we know from the Gospels that it's the Shabbat. It's the day after the Shabbat. Sabemos en el Evangelio que este es el día después de Shabbat. Oh, it's the Bikurim. We know it's that day that Yeshua is showing himself to them. Sabemos que es el Bikurim cuando Yeshua se está mostrando a, a ellos. Now these two uh, disciples are thinking that Yeshua is supposed to... Uh, Liberate Israel. Estos discípulos pensaron que Yeshua debió de haber liberado a Israel. But after our discussion yesterday, after Shabbat's lesson, Pero después de, de nuestra discusión, después de la lección de Shabbat, I want to make sure that you're not confused because this is supposedly the third day. But no quiero que, quiero asegurarme que ustedes no estén confundidos porque este es el tercer día. The key word in verse 21 is the word that. La palabra clave en el versículo 21 es día. Okay. Uh, Reverend, Reverend Veronica, you don't have this, so we're going to do it because I, I did this this morning. It is G3778 in the Greek. Es G377 en el, hebreo, en el griego. The word that means number one. La palabra eso es en el número, en definición uno. It means these days. Significa este día. Meaning after these three days. Significa después de estos tres días. It is G3778. Es G3778. It comes from G3588. Viene de G3758. And, and G846. En I G G G ocho cuatro seis eight four six okay ocho cuatro seis means these after the day is after the third day. Aquí dice después de esto después del tercer día. And you confirm that with the word since. Y puedes confirmarlo con la palabra desde. Which is G575. Que esa palabra G757. Which means from the whole, as in a group. Que significa de un todo, como un grupo. So, what we see in Luke 20, 24, verse 21. Lo que vemos en Lucas capítulo 24, versículo 21. When you go deeper into the, the very good language of Greek. Cuando vas a, te profundizas en el lenguaje perfecto del griego. It's not the third day, it's after the third day. No es en el día, el tercero día, pero es el eh, después del tercer día. Which is confirmed by the Gospel of Mark, chapter que, 10, verse 34. Que es confirmado por el Evangelio de Marco, capítulo, what chapter, right? Chapter 10, verse 34. Capítulo 10, versículo 34. Because I don't want people getting confused like we got yesterday. Porque no quiero que la, la gente se confunda como ayer. 
got to understand that Jehovah the Father keeps his order. Tiene, tienes que entender que Jehovah el Padre da su orden. Yeshua fulfilled in his first coming the first four holy days. Yeshua cuando vino cumplió los primeros cuatro días uh, santos. And he had to fulfill those first four holy days in his first coming. Y él tuvo que cumplir estos cuatro días santos en su primera venida. But sometimes the way the English is written, it can seem contradictory to the other gospel. Hay veces que cuando se escribe en otro lenguaje parece ser contradictorio que en el evangelio. But once you go into the Greek and understand what the Greek word meant, una vez que eh, investigas en el griego y ves lo que significa. The word since is G575. La palabra uh, desde es 575. It means of the, from the whole. Significa del todo. So it means after. The, he's walking on the road with them after the third day. Significa que él está caminando por la ruta con ellos después del tercer día. In the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verse 34. En el Evangelio de Marcos, capítulo 10, versículo 34. Yeshua says he will raise from the grave after three days. Él dice que resucitará del sepulcro después de tres días. Okay, after the third day is the big dream. Después de los tres días es el Bicorim. That was very clear in yesterday's lesson about the second part of the lesson. Esto estaba claro con la lección de ayer. Now let's come back to the Bicorim itself. Ahora regresemos al Bicorim mismo. Let's now look at chapter 24, verse 30. Vamos a ver ahora Lucas 24, versículo 30. Luke 24, verse 30. Lucas 24, versículo 30. As he was reclining with them at the table, he took matzah, made a bracha, and broke it and handed it to them. Amen. Okay, Yeshua is breaking the matzah, showing us we're still in the days of hag matzah. Yeshua está rompiendo la, quebrando la matzah, mostrándonos que están en el día de hag matzah. What do you mean about my mic? Cuts out or the auto. Should I take the auto and just leave it at a certain level? I, <coughs> hold on after two hours or me uh, one second, everybody. Sorry, I'm trying to get the devil doesn't want this to go out there. Everybody hearing me better now? One, two, three, four. Is this good? Uh, good sound. Good sound. Thank you, Tiffany. That's a lot better. Can hear you now. Thank you, Benjamin. Thank you, everybody. Sorry about that. We're trying to do things. You know, we're learning as we go here. Let's go along the road to Emmaus now. Luke chapter 24, verse 30. Vamos a Lucas 24, versículo 30. Okay. As he was reclining with them at the table, he took the matzah, made a bracha, and broke it and gave and handed it over to them. Amen. Now it's interesting that Yeshua is breaking the matzah. Es interesante que Yeshua está quebrantando la matzah. Because he was the one that was broken for our transgressions, Isaiah 53. 
porque él fue quebrantado por nuestras transgresiones, Isaías 53. And now he's the Bikarim and he's giving them some matzah. Ahora, él es el Bikurim y él les está entregando matzah. But here, he's the one that walks along the path with us to show us mercy. Ahora, él es el que recorre el camino con nosotros mostrándonos gracia. And now he's reclining at the table with the two disciples. Él está reclinado en la mesa con los dos discípulos. And he's eating matzah with the disciples like a good Jew would. Él está comiendo matzah con los discípulos como un buen judío. But what's so important about this? Pero qué, qué, ¿cuál es la importancia de esto? Let's read verse 30 again. Leamos el versículo 30 otra vez. As he was reclining with them at the table, he took a, a matzah, made a bracah, broke it and handed it over to them. Amen. Now, he's doing it on the bikarim. Esto lo está haciendo en el bikarim. He's giving them a piece of matzah. Les está dando una porción de matzah. Here it is, the Messiah is giving back a blessing to his disciples. Aquí el Mesías está dando una pequeña bendición a los discípulos. On the Bikarim. En el Bikarim. What are we supposed to be doing to God today? ¿Qué es lo que debemos darle a Dios hoy? Giving him a small piece of the whole. Dándole una pequeña porción del todo. That's what Bikarim is all about. De eso se trata, Bikurim. This is why we have verse 30. Por eso es que tenemos aquí el versículo 30. Now let's go to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 3 through 6. Ahora vamos a leer 1 de Corintios, versículo, capítulo 15, versículos 3 al 6. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 3 through 6. Primera carta de Corintios, capítulo 15, versículos 3 al 6. If anybody needs to get in touch with our tech department, we got Tristan's number. You can let them know if there's any technology issues on your end. Si hay problemas de tecnología, uh, por favor, dejen de saber a Tristan. We're trying to do the best we can, people. Estamos tratando de hacer lo mejor posible. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 3 through 6. Primera de Corintios, capítulo 15, versículos 3 al 6. For among the first things I passed on to you, was I also received, namely, the Messiah died for our sins. And according with the Tanakh, what the Tanakh says, that's the Old Testament, he was buried and he was raised on the third day, in accordance with what the Tanakh says. And he has been seen by Kepha, then by the Twelve. And afterwards, he was seen by more than 500 brothers at one time. The majority of them who are still alive, though some have died. Amen? Let's look at verse 6, please. Leamos el versículo 6, por favor. And afterwards, he has been seen by more than 500 brothers at, at one time. The majority are who, who are still alive, though some have died. Amen? Amen? So we see after the Bikarim that Yeshua was seen by 500 people. Eh, vemos después del Bikarim que Yeshua fue visto por 500 personas. So when somebody says that Yeshua didn't raise from the grave, we got 500 Jehovah Witnesses. <laughs> si alguien dice que Yeshua nunca resucitó, tenemos 500 testigos de Jehová. Now here, let's go back to verse number four because this is also a confusing verse if you don't know the Greek. Vamos al versículo cuatro que también es confuso si no sabes el griego. Verse four, please. Versículo cuatro, por favor. And he was buried, and he was raised on the third day, in accordance with what, what the Tanakh says. Once again, we need the reference of Mark chapter 10, verse 34. Tenemos una vez más que, que recurrir a la referencia de Marcos capítulo 10, versículo 34. And the word on in the Greek is G3326. Y la palabra en el griego de, de N es G3326. 3, 3, 2, 6. And that means after. Significa después. Or as behind as it already passed. O como detrás que ya pasó. So it was good that we had a, a great discussion yesterday. I thought it was very good to, to have that discussion. Yo pensé que era una buena, una buena conversación la de ayer. Me pareció que era muy buena. And then this lesson just confirms 
what we were talking about yesterday. Y esta lección confirma lo que estábamos hablando ayer. That he was three days in the grave. Que él estuvo tres días en el sepulcro. Today is the exact day that he rose from the grave, the resurrection. Hoy es el día exacto donde él resucitó del sepulcro. Now, why is it important that he rose from the grave on the Bikarim? ¿Por qué es tan importante que él resucitó del Bikarim? Now, let's stay in 1 Corinthians 15, but now we're going to read verse 13 through 23. Vamos a seguir en 1 Corintios 15, pero vamos a leer los versículos 13 al 23. 13 through 23. 13 al 23. If there is no resurrection of the dead, then the Messiah has not been raised. If the Messiah has not been raised, then what we have proclaimed is in vain. <clears throat> also, your trust is in vain. Furthermore, you've shown up as false witnesses, for God having testified that God raised up Messiah. That's very important, everybody. Whom he, whom he did not raise, if it, was, if it is true, that the dead are not raised. But the dead are not raised, and the Messiah has not been raised either. And if Messiah has not been raised, your trust is useless. And, it, and you are still in your sin. Also, if, the, if this is the case, those who have died in union with, him, with the Messiah are lost. It is only for, that, for this life that we have put our hope in the Messiah. We are more pitiable than anyone. The fact is, that the Messiah has been raised from the dead, the first fruit, the bikarim of those who have died. For since death came through a man, and the resurrection of the dead has come through a man. Just as the connection with Adam, all die. From connection with Messiah, all will be made alive. But each of us in his own order. The Messiah is the first fruits, the bikarim than those who belong to the Messiah at the time of his coming. Amen? Let's, re let's go back to verse 20 and 21. Leamos el versículo 20 y 21. The fact is that the Messiah has been raised from the dead, the first fruit of those who have died. For since death came through a man, also the resurrection of the dead has come through a man. Amen? Verse 20 is very important. El versículo 20 es muy importante. Because the first fruits, meaning the bickering of those who have died. Porque son las primicias de los que murieron. Okay, Moisha led, led, led us away from a life of sin. Mo, Moisés o Moshe nos guió de una vida lejos del pecado. Okay, but we follow Yeshua because he is our redemption. Pero seguimos a Yeshua porque él es nuestra redención. We must understand that redemption comes from following Messiah, the Anointed One. Tenemos que entender que la redención viene del Mesías, del ungido. Because it's all about one person. Porque se trata de una persona. Moses led us away from a life of sin, one man. Moses nos dio de una vida fuera de pecado. And Yehoshua, Joshua, led us into the Promised Land, one man. We must understand about Yeshua. Debemos entender acerca de Yeshua. That there can only be one first from the dead. Que puede haber solo una, prim una primicia de la muerte. And this is what Bikarim is all about. Giving that de first part to God. Y de eso se trata Bikarim, de darle esa primera parte a Dios. So Yeshua gave his life to God. Yeshua dio la vida a Dios. So you should give your life to God. Tú también deberías darle la vida a Dios. Yeshua thanked the Father, so should we. Yeshua le agradeció al Padre, entonces tú también. What's so important about understanding the Bikarim and why Yeshua is the Bikarim? ¿Por qué es tan importante entender el Bikarim y por qué es el Bikarim? Because Yeshua says, of himself, I'm the Bikarim. Porque Yeshua dice de él mismo que él es el primogénito. Now go to Revelation chapter 1, verse 5. 
Vamos a Revelación de su Apocalipsis, capítulo 1, versículo 5. Revelation, chapter 1, verse 5. Apocalipsis, capítulo 1, versículo 5. Revelation 1, verse 5. Apocalipsis, capítulo 1, versículo 5. This is why we have to understand the Karim first fruits and the resurrection. Por eso es que tenemos que entender el día de primeros frutos, Bikorim y la resurrección. Revelation 1, verse 5 says, and from Yeshua the Messiah, the faithful witness, the first fruit, the Bikarim from the dead and the ruler of earth's kings to him, the one who loves us, who has freed us from our sins at the cost of his blood. Amen? Now this is Yeshua's revelation to us. Esta es la revelación de Yeshua hacia nosotros. He's saying he's the first born from the dead, the Bikarim. El que él está diciendo que él es el primer nacido de la muerte, el Bikarim. And when you give your Bikarim offering, if you're doing what God says, y si das tu ofrenda de Bikarim, como dice Dios, what does the first born person get? ¿Qué es lo que la, el primogénito obtiene? Why is Yeshua saying, I'm the first born from the dead? ¿Por qué él dice que es el primer fruto de la muerte? Now go to Deuteronomy 21, Devarim 21, verse 17. Vamos a leer Deuteronomio 21, versículo 17. Deuteronomy, Devarim 21, verse 17. Deuteronomio 21, versículo 17. Deuteronomy 21, verse 17. What does the firstborn get? What does the first fruit get? De Deuteronomio 21, 17, que, el, que obtiene el primogénito. Why is Yeshua saying, I'm the Bikarim, I'm the firstborn of the dead? Porque Yeshua dice que él es el Bikarim, el primogénito de la muerte. Verse 17, Deuteronomio 21, Deuteronomio 21, 17. Deuteronomio 21, versículo 17. No one, no, he must acknowledge the firstborn, the son of the unloved wife, by giving him a double portion of everything he owns. For he is the first fruit, the bickering of his manhood, and the right of the firstborn is his. Amen? The bickering is about, what does the firstborn get? ¿Qué obtiene el primogénito? Why am I reading about the firstborn? Porque estoy leyendo del primogénito. Because the firstborn gets a double portion of everything. Porque el primogénito obtendrá una doble porción de todo. What did Yeshua get for being the firstborn from the dead? ¿Qué es lo que obtiene Yeshua por haber sido el primer primogénito de la, de la muerte? By being the bikarim, he got a double portion. What did he get? Cuando fue él el bikarim, él obtuvo doble porción. ¿Qué es lo que él, él obtuvo? He got heaven and earth. Él obtuvo el cielo y la tierra. Because he said, I'm the Aleph and the Tav, the beginning and the end. Porque él dijo, yo soy el Aleph y el Tav, el comienzo y el final. Now, why, why Yeshua had to be the firstborn? Porque Yeshua tuvo que ser el, primer, el primogénito. The firstborn from the dead? El primogénito de los muertos. So that he could get the double portion. Así él podría obtener doble porción. And that's what the Bikarim is all about, giving back to God what he is, he deserves. Y eso es lo que se trata Bikarim, de darle a Dios lo que él se merece. It's about getting a blessing. Es acerca de obtener una bendición. Turn to Proverbs 3, verse 7 through 10. Vamos a leer ahora Proverbios capítulo 3, versículo 7 al 10. Proverbs 3, verse 7 through 10. Proverbios 7, versículo Proverbios 3, versículo 7 al 10. Yes. Proverbs 3, verse 7 through 10. Proverbs 3, verse 7 through 10. Proverbios 3, versículo 7 al 10. Don't be conceited about your own wisdom, but fear Jehovah and turn from evil. This will bring health to your body and to Give strength to your bones. Honor your Jehovah with your wealth and the first fruit of all your income. And your granaries will be filled and your vats overflow with new wine. Amen. Let's go back to verse number 9. Leamos el versículo 9. Honor Jehovah with your wealth and with the first fruit of all your income. Amen. 
Honor Jehovah with the bickering of everything. Honra Jehovah con bicor, el bicorín de todo. Remember, there's an order to everything in the kingdom. Recuerda que hay un orden en todo en el reino. Honor Jehovah with everything he gave you. Honra a Jehovah con lo que él te dio. Because bickering is about thanking. It's a thanks offering. It's a blessing. Porque el Corín se trata de una ofrenda de agradecimiento, una bendición. Now, if you if you bless Lord the Lord with your bikurim. Si bendices al Señor con tu bikurim. Let's read verse 10 and what what he says is going to happen to you. Leamos el versículo 10 para ver qué lo qué sucederá con nosotros. And your granaries will be filled and your vats overflow with new wine. Amen. You're going to be overflowing with blessing. Van a estar uh, abundando en, en gracia. How many people want that? ¿Cuántos quieren Any, eso? Anybody want that? Anybody who, does, esto? anybody who doesn't want their blessing, I'll take it. Eh, alguien que, quiera su, que no quiera su bendición, yo la tomaré. Uh, let me go through the screens here. People are popping on and popping off. Anybody don't want their blessing? Chris, you don't want your blessing? No cool. Joseph, you don't want your blessing? Javier, in that purple room, you don't want your blessing? Also, you don't want your blessing? Tiffany, you don't want it? Oh, cool. Okay, let's see who else is here. Oh, all those cameras are still off. All right, so the Lord says if you give, if you do what I say, El Señor dice que si haces lo que yo digo. Know what also bickering is all about? De que bickering también se trata. How many people want a double, double portion of life? ¿Cuántos quieren doble porción de vida? You get this life and then you get the next life and a good life. Vas a tener esta vida y la próxima vida, una buena vida. You want the double portion. You want to do what Jehovah said. Quieres una doble porción y hacer lo que Jehovah te dijo. Let's go back to Leviticus 23. Vamos a Levíticos 23. We're going to read 11 through 14 now. Vamos a leer los versículos 11 al 14. This is our last scripture for this lesson today. Esta es nuestra escritura para la lección del día de hoy. Leviticus 23, verse 11 through 14. Viacra 23, verse 11 through 14. Levíticos 23, versículos 11 al 14. He's away the sheep before Jehovah so that you will be accepted. Known as the way but on the day after Hashabbat, the Shabbat. On the day that you wave the sheep, you're to offer him a male lamb without defect in its first year. As a burnt offering for Jehovah. Its grain offering is to be one gallon of fine flour mixed with olive oil. An offering made by fire. Jehovah, fragrant aroma. Drink offering is to be one wine, you be of wine, one quart. Do not to eat dried eat bread, dried grain, or fresh grain until the day you bring the offering to your Elohim. This is a permanent regulation for all your generations, no matter where you live. Amen. Cohen is to wave it on the day after the Shabbat. El sacerdote me será la gavilla delante de Jehová después de Shabbat. This is that day that we wave our offering before the Lord. Hoy es el día en que mecemos nuestra ofrenda en frente del Señor. This is a permanent regulation through all our generations, no matter where we live. Esta es una regulación permanente para todas las generaciones, sin importar donde vivan. The prophecy of Isaiah 42, verse 4, has been fulfilled. The coastlands have received the Torah. La profecía de Isaías 42, <laughs> versículo 4, se ha cumplido para las costas. Han recibido la Torah. They have received the Torah and they've received salvation, Yeshua, our Messiah, Yeshua. Han recibido la Torah y la salvación, nuestro Mesías, Yeshua. Question you got to ask yourself is la this. La pregunta que te debes hacer el, uh, hoy día es esta. Are you grafted into the house of Israel? Estás injertado en la casa de Israel. If you are, this is a great time of the resurrection. Si lo eres, este es un gran tiempo de resurrección. 
Because Yom HaBikurim is a, day, a time of great rejoicing. Porque Yom HaBikurim es un tiempo de gran regocijo. The winter has passed. Porque el invierno spring, ha pasado. And the springtime has come. Y la primavera ha llegado. This is a day we honor Yeshua because he was our gift to the Lord, the Father. Este es el día en que nos sentimos honrados de llevar nuestra ofrenda a nuestro Rey. This is the day we honor and bring our gift to the King of Kings. Este es el día que nos sentimos honrados de llevar nuestra ofrenda a nuestro Rey. Because we've crossed, from the, we've crossed the river from bondage and death to a new life. Porque cruzamos el río de, de la esclavitud, desde la esclavitud y la muerte a una nueva vida. This is the day that Yeshua has risen and given us a new life. Este es el día en que Yeshua se ha levantado para darnos nueva vida. Where we, we can walk away from the old life. En el cual podemos alejarnos de la vieja vida. And go through the mikvah to a new life. Y atravesar la mikvah hacia una nueva vida. Baruch Hashem, blessed be the name in his glorious kingdom forever and ever. Baruch Hashem, bendito sea su nombre y, glorio, su nombre y glorioso Amen. reino por siempre, jamás. Amén. 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 Amén and amén. Amén y amén. Now we're going to put the final screen up on the... the well, we're going to say, uh, do a salvation prayer first, and then we're going to do the Bikarim prayer. Vamos a primero hacer la oración de salvación y después pondremos para la oración de Bikurim. Why don't we just bow our hearts for one moment because every one of our messages needs a salvation call. Inclinemos nuestros corazones por un momento porque en cada uno de estos servicios todos necesitan salvación. <coughs> It is very clear that Yeshua, our Messiah, has come. Es muy claro que el Mesías Yeshua ha venido. If you're out there and today you on a new life. Hey, si estás afuera y el día de hoy quieres nueva vida. Messiah Yeshua paid your debt to give you a new life. El Mesías Yeshua pagó tu, tu deuda para darte nueva vida. He is our Bikarim. He is the first fruit of the dead. Él es nuestro Bikarim, el primer fruto de la muerte. And if you're out there and you've never accepted Yeshua as Messiah, today is a good day. Si, uh, si, I'm sorry. If you're out there You've never given your life to Yeshua. Si estás afuera y nunca has dado tu vida a Yeshua. And today is a day that you should accept him into your heart and your spirit. Entonces hoy es el día en que puedes aceptarlo en tu, en de, en tu corazón y en tu espíritu. You're saying, how do I do that? Y tú te preguntarás, ¿cómo haces esto? I'm going to lead you in a simple, short prayer. Yo te guiaré en una oración muy simple y pequeña. Prayer of thanksgiving and forgiveness. Una oración de agradecimiento. And you must say these words, but mean them in your heart. Y debes repetir estas palabras, pero sentirlas en tu corazón. Say, Yeshua, I accept you as Messiah. Di, Yeshua, te acepto como el Mesías. I believe you rose from the grave on the Bikarim. Yo creo que tú te levantaste de la muerte en el Bikarim. I believe you, the Father rose you from the dead. Yo creo que el Padre te resucitó de la muerte. I invite you into my heart right now, into my spirit. Te invito a, a, ahora a mi corazón y en mi espíritu. I ask you to wash me. Te pido que me laves. Clean me. Que me limpies. Make me something new. Y que hagas algo nuevo de mí. You've done that for the very first time. Te has hecho eso por primera vez. And you are born again. Entonces has nacido de nuevo. But you must proclaim Yeshua before man so he can proclaim you before his father and his angels. Pero tienes que profesar Yeshua en delante de los hombres para que él pueda profesarte a ti en delante del Padre y los ángeles. So if you've done it for the first time, just let us know so we can pray with you. Si lo has hecho por primera vez, levanta tu mano para orar contigo. Amen. 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 Okay, now for any of those that wish to give an offering. Para aquellos que desean dar la ofrenda. In accordance with the Bikarim, what it said there. De acuerdo con Bikarim y lo que dice ahí. There's a prayer that must be said. Hay una oración que se debe decir. Words that must come out of your mouth as we saw in the psalm. Las palabras que deben salir de tu boca así como decimos, eh, leímos en el salmo. Okay, we're going to put the English words up first and then the Spanish words up. Do you have the Spanish words? 
That's the Hebrew. Yeah, they're at the bottom, the Spanish. Okay, they're at the bottom. Ben says they're at the bottom. Okay, we're going to do the English first. So if you want to give an offering to the Lord. Vamos a, vamos a dar la ofrenda al Señor y primero comenzaremos con el inglés. Then lift up your offering to the Lord or lift your hands up to the Lord. Levanten sus manos al Señor, después la diremos en español. And read, let's read verse 2 and 10 from Deuteronomy 26. Y leamos los versículos 2 y 10 de Deuteronomio. You are to take the first fruits of all the crops, ground yields which you will harvest from your land, Jehovah your Elohim is giving you. Put them in a basket and go to the place where Jehovah your Elohim will choose to have his name. Verse number 10, therefore as you see, I've now brought the first fruits of the land which you have Jehovah given me. You then to put them down the basket before Jehovah. Your Elohim, prostrate yourself before Yahweh your Elohim. Thank Doctor, you, Lord, for. Go ahead. Deuteronomio 26, 2. Entonces tomarás de las primicias de todos los frutos que sacares de la tierra que Jehová tu Dios te da, y la pondrás en una canasta e irás al lugar que Jehová tu Dios escogiere para hacer habitar allí su nombre. Versículo 10. Y ahora he aquí he traído las primicias del fruto de la tierra que me diste, oh Jehová, y lo dejarás delante de Jehová tu Dios. Amen, Lord. We thank you for this time of the Bikarim. Te damos gracias por este tiempo de Bikarim. And you see that the people have brought the first fruits from their homes. Mira que la gente ha traído sus primeros frutos de sus hogares. So in your, your, your word, Lord, you said you would pour out a double portion to them. En tu palabra, Señor, tú dices que vas a derramar doble porción en ellos. We, we count on your blessing there, Lord. Contamos con tus bendiciones, Señor. In your name, Yeshua, and everybody said, Amen. En nombre de Yeshua, Amen. And then at the end, we also say this prayer because we now start counting the Omer. Y ahora al final vamos a decir esta oración también porque vamos a comenzar con la cuenta del Omer. We say, Brukata Yehovah Elohim, Amelika Allah, Masher Kedishan, Abu Mitzvotab, Tzivano Al Tiferat Ha Omer. Blessed are you. Lord our God, King of the universe, who has set us apart by your commandment, has commanded us to count the Omer. Amen. Bendito seas, oh Señor Dios nuestro, Rey del universo, que nos has apartado con tus mandamientos y nos has ordenado que contemos el Omer. Let's end with the ironic benediction. Terminaremos con la bendición arónica. Anabale ka vikune ka Isa Yehova Anabale ka viasem laka Shalom Yehova, let you and keep him may Yehova and let his face shine upon you. Yehova be gracious unto you and give you his shalom. Life, fullness, and peace. In the name of the Bikarim, Yeshua, and everybody said, Amen. Shalom Aleichem. Shalom. This is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman. I would personally like to thank you for tuning in to The Remnant's Call each and every week. You can listen to the full message on our website, BethGoyim.org. If you have drawn closer to the King of Kings, learned more about Him today, we are blessed. If you are blessed by these messages, please consider a donation to our ministry. You can go to our website, BethGoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M.org. And click on the Donate button. You do not have to have a PayPal account to donate. All you need is a debit card. Once again, thank you very much for listening to The Remnants Call. If you have not taken your first steps to be born again, just ask God's help. Remember, it's His loving grace that has come to find you. No one is worthy or able to reach God, but God can reach us, and He's reaching out to you now. Just open your heart and let Him in. His arms are open, and the blessing of salvation and eternal life are waiting for you. Don't let it wait any longer. Give it a good night, but we
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you and give you his shalom. Shalom. My name is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman, and I invite you to come to visit our congregation. If you are in the tri-state area, come out and visit with us on Shabbat. We are a congregation of Jews and Gentiles living as one in the Messiah Yeshua. BGMC is a place of true worship. The focus never wanders from the Hebraic roots of our faith. Beth Goyim is rooted in the Word of God from Bereshit through to the book of Revelation. Messiah's strong words against man-made tradition are carefully recorded in Matthew 7. That is the reason we only follow the straight-up instructions found in Scripture. Truly, the way, the truth, and the life. If you're looking for a deeper walk with Adonai, come out for our Tuesday evening Bible study called Messianic Torah Time. Come, spend the day with us on any Shabbat. We start at 11 a.m. with the sound of the ancient Hebrew shofar. Next, we offer our King praise and worship in English, Hebrew, and Spanish. After worship, we review the headlines in the previous week's news from around the globe, especially news from the Holy Land, Israel. We don't just list the news headlines as current events, but we comb through the scriptures, searching for clues to understand what they mean and then to help pinpoint prophetically our current position on Adonai's clock. After digesting all that modern information, we leave the world behind as we journey with our Adonai deep into his eternal word, not with just one or two scriptures, but usually seven or more scriptures. The spiritual nourishment and the richness of his kingdom become accessible to the ones who share this special time and seek them out. The day does not end there. Because Shabbat is so special to him, there is always so much more that our king desires to share. So instead of separating and leaving, we stay together as a family for potluck lunch and an afternoon study of our king's word. We close the Shabbat together with the reading of the new week's parasha. That's the Torah portion. Even after those blessings, many of us just can't get enough. So the members bring prepared homemade foods to share while we all enjoy an uplifting movie together. If all that information is not quite enough, you can check out our website where you will find over 200 video teachings and biblical holy day studies. Under Messianic Torah Time, the Hebrew Roots button, you'll discover free studies on many, many different topics, including PowerPoint slide presentations. If Beth Goyim sounds like a place you'd love to visit, but you live outside the tri-state area, there is still a way to connect with us. We stream live on the internet on Tuesday, Thursday, and Shabbat. The website is www.bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M.org. Our phone number is 973-338-7800 or 978-2-YESHUA. That's 978, the number 2, YESHUA. Shalom.